every day we 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 get closer and closer to Christmas. And I still haven't bought my presents for my friends. I gotta go out and do that. Three, two, one. Hello. Wow, we clap. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. It is the BNS stream today on this fine 9th of December 2024. I hope you're having a wonderful week. And we'll have a wonderful week ahead of you. My week has been sick. I've been sick all week. And I don't sound sick very now, but I you'll you'll catch that a little bit at the back of my throat. And if I ever try and do falsetto, then you'll definitely realize that. But uh, yeah, no, right after the last stream, I went to bed and I woke up and I had the same kind of influenza symptoms as my mum from the day before. And uh, then I had every symptom, every, like just over the course of the whole week. And now I feel mostly 100% except my throat's a little swollen still. So I'm like, ah, what's going on here? But no one wants to hear about me being sick, unless you do. Um, let's dive into the game, shall we? Woo! There we go. Uh, but yeah, no, oops, oh my gosh, nearly <laughs> hit the mic, cut my hand in the process. This is perfect to do while you... <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, we're playing Gex. We're playing... It's more Gex. Uh, the last stream was the start of the game, and, uh, we, uh, we did the first four worlds. We did the Snowy Land, the Mystery Land, the Egypt Land, and the World War Whatever Land. And, uh, now we're gonna continue on the game. We're gonna try and do... F well, I guess we've got seven worlds to go, and probably two streams to do it in. Uh, but yeah, nope, this is Gex 3, and we're here to go. But there's a lot of... A lot of fun news, a lot of things going on in the world uh, this past uh, week, which has been absolutely wild. Um, and uh, I guess well, I'll, I'll get into that once I describe what's happening in the game a little bit. So we're going to head back to Lake Flaccid. Uh, and we've got two more levels in here. And we've already plotted out the whole world. So we'll nail these. And we've also got the little bonus section as well that I need to... Uh, wander into and, and uh, play but I think the easiest thing is let's wander over to the far end of the the world and uh, Let's give the uh, the Pirate level a go because I looked at it for a bit. We hadn't actually well. We didn't actually play it. So So here's hot dog hill the good old World War 2 level But yeah, no, you'll, you'll probably hear me kind of clearing my throat or just kind of going like eh, eh, um, In the back. Uh, I have not been speaking for much for the past week uh, so it's going to be very interesting uh, to see how I go again, but uh, you know how it is. You know how it always is. It's always some people, it's like when they get sick, they get very sick. And when there's some people get sick, it's like quick, but they get sick often. And there's some people who just never get sick. Lock and low, little lizard. Here we are, Cut Cheese Island. Uh, I like this pirate level. It's good fun. Uh, this consists of, I think, three rooms? Three... Kind of set piece areas uh, that we'll wander between. Uh, and, uh. Well, it worked for Douglas nice. Rank up the Gilbert and Sullivan, dude. Wow, sir. Them treasure chests contain treasure. But, wow. Really? The treasure chests contain. Wow. Okay. Uh, a lot of this level involves switches, and the switches will activate things, and generally you want to find all the switches and activate them, so. Uh, but the level's gonna be mostly straightforward. Uh, you're gonna see some weird things like this. Uh, like every single wall saying, what is this? 1093, whatever that means in Roman numerals. Even the sides of the chest, if you saw that briefly. Hold on. Oh, I'm way too close. Uh, I'm way too close. Hold on. You saw it there as well. Isaac, the Lido deck is filthy. Oh yeah, that's... Oh, this is, uh, what, what would this be? One, 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 zero, eight? Is this a phone number or something secret? What's going on here? I love pirates, uh, in the aesthetic sense. Lots of wood, lots of, like, trim all over the place. Skulls, we got pirate juice, trademark. Very nice. Uh, also, we've got a, a, a cannon. Can you guess where you need to shoot? Nice. Uh, but yep, same rules apply. Uh, we're gonna get 100 flies to start off, so I'll show off basically the whole level. Um, 
Yeah, there's a lot of little neat areas in this map. Hit me, go on, hit me. So that would be good fun. Uh, but yeah, so uh, let's start the uh, the the stream by talking about what I've been playing for the past week uh, while I've been a bit ill, and the answer is. Uh, sort of a bit of too many things, and I haven't exactly made uh, crazy progress towards anything in particular, but I'd say probably the the easy one uh, to make comment on is a game called Puzzler World 2013. Puzzler, I think, is a British, hopefully they're British, I might be entirely wrong on this one, uh, based, one of those like, you know the, those kinds of, uh, uh, like the puzzle books you see it like news agents and it's like oh it's got sudoku it's got crosswords it's got like everything uh puzzler is i guess one of those brands in the uk hi right, he'll he'll let me hit him at one point there you go there you go um uh yeah they're one of those companies that do this uh if you're in australia maybe i think was it love ads love ads is a name uh is one of those as well um I feel like, does someone handcraft every Sudoku puzzle, or is it like... Just chuck it in a generator, print it, throw it in a book. I feel like it's the other one. Uh, do a pro karate kick to avoid having to do a lot of this level, by the way. That's good fun. Um, but yeah, no, they, uh, they, they've got, uh, multiple DS games. Uh, and in fact, Puzzler World 2013 is not only just a DS game, there's a 3DS equivalent. I feel like it's the same game, though. I don't think there's any particular reason why, uh, you know, the 3DS version is that different. Um, but the presentation is neat on the DS. Uh, it's nice and gooey, which is a good fun. Nice and fluid. Uh, but, uh, yeah, the, um, the... Uh, the Puzzle World 2013 is one of those puzzle collection games. It has crosswords, it has Sudokus, it's got word searches, it's got so many things. Wow. Uh, I think that's on the ledge right above me. Oh, yeah, I was like, hold on, how do I get up there? Yeah, I gotta watch out for these walls that you can climb everywhere. And he's very dead. We'll follow you. He's very dead. I don't think there's anything else to actually shoot here as well. Nah, that's pretty straightforward. Greetings, Blob! How's it going? Uh, but yeah, no, Puzzle World 2013. Uh, it's got a lot of them. It's probably got like... Yeah, maybe like 50 or so of each of the puzzle types. And some of them are as straightforward as it's... Uh, was it like a maze? Some of them are like... There's this one called link a -picks. Just got up. Woke up this morning. Uh, where it's like, Linker Picks is like, what is it? You got different color squares and they each tell you how far away the square they connect to is. And then effectively, there's a unique combination for the whole puzzle and some of them get massive. Yeah, the wall of death there. Oh my gosh. Uh... There's not much to really say about Puzzle World 2013. It's, uh, it's, I mean, it's one of those, I guess the question is, who's the market for these kinds of games? Uh, and I guess the answer is me, because I'm playing through it. Um, but it's something nice, it takes your, your mind off things, and also it's fairly low effort. It's actually, what's really weird is that every time you finish a puzzle, you get given a, an opportunity to do a bonus puzzle. And by opportunity, I mean you have to do the bonus puzzle. It's it's one incarnation of a bonus puzzle for every uh, puzzle in the game, all 560 of them. And uh, every time you clear a bonus puzzle, uh, which is always a different kind of puzzle as well. Uh, I should have been holding up in the little bit here. <laughs> let it let this wall come past. I love this as well, where it's like you're on the end wall, so obviously it doesn't reach you. And then you gotta, you gotta somehow go up to it. Oh. Ah, it's right up here. We'll follow you, Ouch. Um, but uh, once you beat one of those puzzles, your reward is you get to gamble. Also, that happens if you stay on, it's a bit weird looking. You're meant to jump off and then immediately, like, try to run to the other side. Uh. 
does have two flies, so you're going to need it for the remotes at least, but... You want to grab the bonus coins as well, don't you? Yeah. It's cool though, I like it. That's good fun. Uh, yeah, you get to gamble, there's a slot machine. And uh, every run of the slot machine gets you uh, some coins, and you can use the coins to redeem for hints. Um, ultimately though, the, the slot machine has uh, a feature on it. It's not just like... It's not just for slots, it's like, oh, no, they properly thought of all the stuff on it, but I'm like... It's a kid's game. We got slot machines in a kid's game, how could they? I'm not too, like, pearl clutchy over that, but like, oh my gosh, like, ratings boards will grill on Pokemon, they ain't grilling on Puzzle World 2013, so... Uh, it's got a retro achievement set, but it's a pretty ordinary one, because it's mostly just the achievements in-game. It's not doing anything too fancy. But it does have some fun, uh, achievement titles, so props to that. Uh, f fortunately, this area is not like, uh, Treasure Planet, where I'm just gonna spend, like... Well, maybe not hours, but certainly minutes crawling around, uh, a pirate ship. Actually, it was an hour. Yeah, it was a solid hour crawling around here. And yes, you can fall off the side of the ship, but fortunately, they haven't put a, uh, a fly, like, quite on the edge of the ship, so that's okay. Hi, hi, there you go. Uh, each of these little side rooms also has a uh, well, cannon here, and you gotta shoot the oncoming pirate ships. They're coming at ya! Get to Ahoy! Uh, it's, uh, yeah, this is the end of the level. Um, just, uh, just this kind of scene the, on the edge of the ship. So, uh, Gecko Ahoy! Very nice. Um, so we'll be uh, fairly done with this one. I don't think this one's a too long one. Uh, but I, I think probably... Uh, we'll try and fit four in the stream, because there's only seven levels to go, including this one. So, uh, if I don't do four in this stream, I gotta do four in the next one. So, we'll try our best. kind of surprised at how quickly I am taking some of these though, but maybe it's because I'm not like stopping as much. I'm just sort of going, yeah, you'll, you'll see what I mean with these levels as, uh, as you go about them. I still don't know what's with the Roman numerals. They're all over the place. I also, oh, I, I only knew about IIX like a year or two ago because I used to think, oh, shouldn't you be saying VIII? Because I, I thought the rule was you do your favorite guest game? Welcome, Mr. Comrade K. 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 Sorry. Oh, there's an L. I like this one a lot. This one's good fun. Which one's your favorite level, though? This is probably the remote I'll snag at the end. That was amazing, sir. That was amazing, sir. There you go. Um. <laughs> And then I immediately fall off the ledge. Very nice. Uh, the edge and ledge just blurred in my brain just then. <laughs> we'll follow you, creature. But uh, but yeah. I what's with uh games and slot machines not being you know you can't have slot machines in your games. You can't have chance mechanics sort of. I don't know. It's it's tough to navigate around ratings boards because it seems that they change so much over time. Uh, and I feel like people's, you know, like, opinions of gambling, eh. Favorite level is probably Hot Dog Hill, which is like the military level, the superhero one. Well, uh, I did the Hot Dog Hill last week, and I'll probably do the superhero one next week, so... We're neither gonna have the best or the worst today. But that's alright, because uh, I gotta do the Grease level, so... If you play the Nintendo 64 version, though, then uh, no Grease level for you. You get a, you get a different level entirely. I love doing that, though. That's good fun. And then I immediately get sniped by a parrot. And of course, you got to hit the parrot. Pokemon Red taught a six-year-old that gambling is very addicting to evil. It is, yes. Well, it's it's literally driven. It, it, like it, the basement has a crime syndicate. 
back there. Like, to me as a kid, I used to, uh, PS1, the Mythology Network, yeah, 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 yeah. The infamous Mythology Network. We'll get to that one, we'll get to that one. I don't mind the superhero level, like, I, I don't know, my brain, my brain clicks in a bit more on that one. But we'll probably, I'll probably test myself on that one. Um. But yeah, uh, on the topic of rating sports, I think this is probably a, a mild segue to, uh, I played, uh, for the first time yesterday, uh, also, here we go, Blendo plays a new game for once, Borderlands 2 taught me gambling is fun, and you'll never get, you'll never get it, nah. And also the best weapons aren't even in the jackpot on that game, <laughs> that's, uh, best weapons are on the, uh, the Borderlands 3, uh, prologue DLC. I actually don't know what's the best weapons ex apart from that, but they are broken in that. In that, like you can start soloing all the, all the um, the super bosses, which is just like, oh, come on, guys! I actually, I did start replaying the pre sequel because I played it with a mate two years ago, and I don't remember a thing about it. Other than I didn't like the dialogue, and I thought a lot of the locations looked similar. Uh, and currently, as I've started the game, uh, I'm not having a fun time with the weapons. Everything feels a bit too weak to me. There you go, the, the kick works every time. There we go. Uh, I'm pretty sure the last few flies are around here, so... And I'll be eating my words if they're not. Uh, but yeah, it gets a bit perilous at the end here though, I'll tell you that. Not too perilous. That seems like a nice whole number of paws. There you go. But there is still a missing bonus coin out there. Out there somewhere. Uh, but yeah, I don't have too much to say on Borderlands the pre-sequel though. I will definitely have more to say once I get closer to the end of it. Here we go, one more fly. Where is it? There it is. Very nice. Uh, there is also a platform here if you want to just work your way back. Uh, which I might just commit to the remote. Because, I mean, there's two remotes at the end of this level. And there's one there's one bonus coin, but I know where it is. It's just in the other direction. I always forget to get it, but... Get the flies first. Uh, let's have a bit of, um, bit of, uh, flirting. Nice work, Pegleg. Arg me, wench. When this is over, we can play pirate. And Blackbeard the Gecko will be your nasty cabin. Why don't Find you yourself. Why don't before you start making vacation plans? Arg me! No, all right. Well, if you need me, I'll be out there somewhere trying to save you. <clears throat> Find yourself a GF that you can call wench. <laughs> To make pirate puns too. Have we looked at the- uh, no we haven't. Yes, actually good call out, good call out. We're, we're doing idle animation. Uh... She would- yes, yeah, she is that kind of actress. She was not hired just for her look, she was hired for her personality as well. I get seasick. Hold the game still! Nice. Hold on, give us a- there he goes. He's gonna do, do some piratey stuff. Do some pirate. Do some pirate stuff. Stop looking. Do a pirate thing. I don't think he's doing a pirate thing. The peg looks fun though. Yeah, okay. Uh, but yeah. What, what, a, what a curious thing as well because the Nintendo 64 version, is she like not even visibly there? I mean, they definitely don't have the full motion video, and uh, oh, we'll get we'll get into the ending. We'll, we'll, we'll get into what happens in the ending next week. I'll tell you that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, on on the topic of age rating boards, uh, one one thing uh, I guess that a lot of games have sort of felt to me recently, and this is maybe more from a observation standpoint, is that uh, uh, ratings are a little bit. Like, you have to start complying a bit more with- not complying, but like, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get, we'll get into the ending. We'll get there. Don't worry. Um, but uh, how do I put it? I mean, you always got to be compliant with a ratings board. But there's a lot of games recently that feel like they're having to take things that did exist in the past. And I think maybe the more um, remasters uh, probably highlights this point as well. Uh, things that were okay in the past suddenly not being acceptable, and particularly around uh, costumes, seems to be a big one. I see not necessarily violence, but uh, um, there's some examples. Like, for example, there was a remaster of The Thing on the PS2 that just came out. Uh, thanks, Night Dive. Uh, and uh, here in Australia, it's got an R rating, which is more than the original game, which came out before there was even an R18 rating on video games. It used to be exclusively for movies. It was like if a game was R18, it was immediately seen as a murder simulator and therefore you can't do it. Um, but then there's so many games that have come out in the past like 10 years since they introduced it. Not for G- uh, actually I think, yeah, just in time for GTA 5. Which was 2013 by the way, do you feel old? <laughs> um... But I, I always find, like, it's it's interesting to see, like, which things do have to get, like, changed. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't played Turok 3, but I do want to play through Turok 2 at some point um, on stream. I've played the Turok 1 on stream, and I've played, like, probably a half dozen other Night Dive releases. We've got Quake 1, Quake 2, uh, Shadow Man, uh, any other Night Dive games I've played on stream? I think those ones, but four is a solid number, for, given that I only stream once a week. Um, so I believe there's a little side passage. I've forgotten which side it's down. Okay, well you have to get up to the end anyway, so we'll get there. But yeah, and uh, Samuel Villarreal can have my babies. I love the man. Uh, I have the first one on Steam. I need Turok 4. Or Turok 3, yeah. Yeah, Turok 3, yeah. Gotta go for a few minutes. Don't finish too many levels. I won't. Don't worry. I mean, I still gotta get two remotes, so we're still in here for a little bit longer. But yeah, no, Turok 2 is like a really incredible game for like <laughs> how, like, not that Turok is an unknown license. I knew of it ahead of when the remasters came out, but I didn't know that specifically Turok 2. I'd always see Turok 1 get like you know, flex around. So it's interesting seeing Turok 2 and being like, oh, okay. Uh, okay, this is, yeah, this is the wacky part. You gotta jump down here. You just have to, like, sort of <laughs> nudge the camera. Hope for the best. It could be better. It, oh, snap. It could be better. But if you're pro, look at that. And you get a nice little Crash Bandicoot platform to lead you back. Isaac, the deck is lock and load, lock and load a little lizard. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's such a cheeky like little back section, but uh, yeah, it's just for the the bonus coin. So I'll show you about the um, the hidden clappers as well. Uh, we, there was one in the past uh, stream. Uh, there's a, a hidden clapper in the first three of the four hub bonus levels. The ones that give you the, 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 the pieces for the vault. Um, so I'll show that off uh, after the next level, because that's only one more level left in the hub. But yeah, that, those things are like... You show people and they're like, what? That was in the game? What? <laughs> in fact, actually, probably the one the next level is like the hardest one to even know is there. That'll be fun. Oh, okay. Uh, you know about the vault, but do you know about the secret film clips? The secret, secret film clips in the, uh, in the, the bonus levels. I love that. I, I think, I think games shouldn't be afraid to, like, hide secrets and other cool Easter eggs and things like that. There's so many games nowadays where it's just like, oh, they're, they're afraid of, like, not letting you play things. Ah, I'll show you one, and then, uh, you can, uh... Rank up with Gilbert and Sullivan, dude. Uh, I don't know, just probably look it up <laughs> rather than, like, crawling through my stream from last week.
The only thing about this level, I guess, is that, like, all three... Like, you gotta do this room all three times. And I guess there's probably various levels in this game that, you know, have a similar... I guess... Is it an issue? It's a, de it's a design choice. Where they're just, you know, in order and you gotta just witness that first room. Um... There you go. <laughs> I was like, oh, Let's avoid the skeletons. These doors are very odd, but... Yeah, they're fine. Wherever it is, there it is. Uh, but introduce a game that uh, perhaps... I actually don't know what its age rating is, uh, but it ticks all the boxes uh, after we've hit every single controversy about... Uh, not specifically this game, but everything in it. Uh, I started playing uh, Marvel Rivals this morning, or this afternoon. And... Uh, Marvel Rivals, uh, put it better for worse, is uh, Overwatch, as in day one Overwatch. It is uh, good fun, because I enjoyed day one Overwatch, and then I thought Overwatch got too uh, tied up in competitive play. Yes, it, it, yeah, it's basically it's basically Overwatch. It's a 6v6 hero shooter, it's got payload pushing and the... Uh, King of the Hill maps where it moves between uh, what's the best of three and there's different like kind of maps in those best of three like yeah, okay and it's got lots of characters some are tanks some are most are damage dealers some are healers uh, you will complain about your team not uh, contributing to your success which is a bit of a shame and that's one thing that always pushes me away from some of those games um, but currently and this is always one thing I enjoy uh, when it's at the beginning no one knows what they're doing. We gotta eat the rubber duckies. This is probably one of my lesser favorite bonus stages. I don't mind it. But it's a little hard to navigate. Because you've got like this like... Cannon shooting the wall. And then you got this cannon. Also I'm going anti-clockwise for a reason. Which shoots through a tunnel. You can see there's a duck in the tunnel as well. Uh, and that's usually also... <laughs> uh, this tunnel's always a bit interesting to go down because if you touch anything that blows up, you get uh, stun locked, which is not fun. So, uh, Gex riding an alligator and using a chain as a leash—that is cool, though. I love—I love the setting. Hurry, hurry, hurry! Ah, uh, you can't jump as well, but passing zone ahead. Yeah, sure. Uh, so I believe there's five on the bottom floor, and then kind of annoyingly, the way you get up onto this top floor is that there's two little, like, descent points as you go along. So I think, maybe not on this level, but there's a, you know, there's a second bonus stage that looks just like this one. There you go. I always get like thrown off on like which direction. Oh my gosh, on which direction you go. But uh, this first one gives you enough time, but it's not too bad. There you go. Okay, so now we got to turn around and go up it the other way. Nice sign. And we're not going up to the start. The start is the start. All these uh, little hieroglyphs as well. They're just here, you know. <laughs> I wonder if some of these stages were designed for a potential multiplayer mode that ended up never happening. It just seems like this is around the time when maybe some games would try. I don't know. It doesn't seem like it would fit, but I'm just curious. Who knows. Uh, but yeah, no, that's the pirate level. And it's bonus stage. So, nice and easy. Nice and smooth. Diamond, star, square, x, triangle, circle. We got one of each. One of each in that password. That seemed reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, Marvel Rivals, uh, I don't have a ton to say uh, other than I'm a decent Hawkeye. It, it sort of snaps onto heads quite a fair bit more than I'm expecting, so... Uh, I probably don't think I'm as good at sniping as, you know, I should, but... Hawkeye is arrow spam enough towards people's heads and you will deal the damage you need to deal. 
Uh, and also, you are probably one of two characters geared towards taking out, uh, you know, Iron Man, who constantly plays at a, you know, what was it commercial flight <laughs> altitude? Commercial? It's just like, he's so checked out, but he, he will, he will, he will destroy your day. Um, also, the tanks destroyed my day, and the lack of healers. No one likes playing healers. Some people like playing Mantis, and I, I appreciate that the healers have more going on than just healing. They've usually got buffs and other kinds of things that actually make them feel like they're doing stuff. Um, so that's fun. Or they revive people, that's fun. To the Western Station! Rock and load, little lizard! We gotta <laughs> visit the world's largest mound of poop. Also the organ trail. I love the theming of this level, but oh boy is it dark. I actually wonder if it's a lot better on the Nintendo 64 I'm version. To find Billy smile. Nice. Support roles, Matt. That is true. I used to be like a tank main in Overwatch all the time. I'd always play D.Va. Would be my main. And then uh, when Hammond came out, I'd always play as Hammond. Um, but yeah, Overwatch for me sort of died out. One, because I personally got a bit burnt out watching the Overwatch League and then failing to emulate their uh, capabilities. Um, and then also I would play with teammates that would, uh, you know, try to, try to urge you to play the competitive strategies that do actually require teamwork and therefore don't really work in pub lobbies. Like, play pub lobbies like pub lobbies, guys. Wait, you can't, you can't berate me over the mic because literally I don't even know, like, how to say your names, you know, like that. It's, it's always tricky. That's always what, uh, pushes me out of Counter-Strike as well. It's just, not... Not a try-hard attitude, but more like a, like, people don't recognize that, I, uh, like, you can't get that level of coordination. I love that you can walk outside the level here, and there's literally nothing. We're at, like, the bottom of this level as well. There's nothing to do here. Seriously, yeah. <laughs> it's just there. Uh, I hate having a swing at the chick- oh my gosh. Well, I- okay, double points. I hate having to swing at the chickens, because every time you die, you gotta swing at the chickens again. And it's very hard to know how many chickens you've done. Maybe if you had, like, a fly counter, where it's like someone- well, I mean, I know you got, like, a number of flies up there, but as in, like, if- if someone told you, don't leave this area until you've got so many flies, and just telling you exactly how many flies you need as you keep walking places, probably be the easiest way. Uh, going out of the fence. Yeah, exactly. It's like, why? Why is it there? Also, uh, Crazy Jethro. Broke, broke, brone, repair? Bronk, sorry. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Nice. Yeah, it, I mean, the chickens is only here and the top of the level as well, so it's not too bad. Yeah, it's kind of annoying, like, here, when you're like, you know, like, did you, do you, do you know how many chickens I haven't hit yet? Because I'm going to do, like, one last, like, sweep through these ones. Oh, I missed that one. I don't know if I've hit this one. I don't, I still don't know if I've hit it. Ah, I've, I've probably done it, so. Uh, yeah, um... Exactly. And now, and now I gotta hit this one, which at least I'm, I'm mentally tracking. Uh, let's assume 21 is the number of flies. I could have been paying attention before I died as well, so I'd have had like a second number. But I'm gonna assume 21. Oh, no, 22. 22. It's not mine, yes. Very nice. Also the names of the mules there. Al Nino, Gluefoot. Wallet maker. Go ahead. Make my lunch. The donkeys use a manual saves can climb steep hills. Well, good thing he's got a manual. Also, yeah. <laughs> Two of these chickens up here. Now you can hit square. And the donkey will nod his head. And you can jump on him as well. And you're gonna hear that noise constantly. So I apologize now. <laughs> Sup Fetty! You're gonna, you are gonna love that noise. Donkey is a wild one, sir. It could even headbutt. It could even headbutt. 
And you gotta watch out for the cacti. They don't- they look like they're just like props, but trust me, you take damage on them for some reason. And the donkey has a turning circle, because of course he does. Oh. <laughs> it's a bit easier to just jump off him. This last stream, good half an hour on this one. You did miss a pirate level. Uh, fortunately though, I do have to do the grease level, and I'll probably do it this stream. Ow. Okay, they're both just standing on each other. Uh... But yeah, uh... Not much to say about Marvel Rivals, other than, um... Uh, certainly it shows the power- I can follow the most gexiest platform mascot. He is. He is a great pla platform mascot. Despite only having one game on that platform. Uh, fortunately the eagles do not drop flies, so... At least there's vines next to that cactus going down. Uh, was that here? Uh, I don't think that's the kind I can climb on. There's definitely some later in the level, I just don't think that's the climbing kind. Uh, this is the climbing kind. And it looks very odd right here, I always feel very awkward on these ones. Yeah, this one's such a cheeky- it's just for a life as well, just down here. Um... Yeah, not much to say about Marvel Rival- oh, no. I preempt- I, I instinctively tried to jump. The time waste stream. Uh, I, ins I instinctively tried to jump because I'm very just like, I don't trust my landing. Uh, if it makes you feel better, it was only for a life, so, uh, I'm not trying that again. You feel lucky, punk? You feel lucky, punk? I don't feel lucky. Uh, but yeah, if there's one thing with Marvel Rivals, it's, uh, well, there's a couple of things. Um, first of all, uh, we have, yeah, exactly, one life gain, one life loss. Uh, there exists a wonderful tweet, uh, by a certain person called Mike Yabara. Mike Yabara, if I'm saying his name right as well, there's no vowel between Y and B. Uh, but I'm pretty sure Mike Yabara used to be, uh, the CEO of Blizzard? Uh, I have tried. I've played like five games. Uh, and I'm, I'm mostly a Hawkeye main right now, so, which is, is weird, but I should, uh, hello cowboy. Um, this should be good fun. I do want to give more of the characters a go, because, you know, it's, it's impossible. There's 35 characters. It's actually like, it's impossible to like, give them all a fair go in a short amount of time. I think there's a decent amount of nuance to each of them as well, uh, even if a lot of them still have the, the Doomfist or the Reaper style alt of kill enemies in area. But, uh, I like the synergy between the abilities, um, and I like, uh, the theming. The theming's good fun. Just having lots of, like, wacky stuff happening, you know, like... It, it, it rides the balance between, like, being able to sort of survive things and being able to take things out on your own. It does an alright job for that. It's not perfect, but it's alright. I've played games that have definitely done a lot worse. Um, oh my gosh. This one chicken. This is the one. That is the one chicken. Uh, is it better than Concord? Well, uh, to put it fairly, I never played Concord. I am shocked that Concord is, like, full dead. Like, they didn't even attempt to just, like, free-to-play it, like, immediately. Because there's been some games where they, they went to free-to-play so quickly, you wouldn't even realize, like, that you had to pay for them at some point. Uh, but Concord just did not. Which is, uh, such a shame. Um, oh, uh, Marvel Rivals with the destructible terrain. That's also good fun. And it's actually good. Like, how fun it is to just, like, destroy, like, holes in some of the, the buildings and just... I think, yeah, I hope it goes for a while. I'm actually... Go ahead. I won't say it's not gonna be an Overwatch killer, because Overwatch is an Overwatch killer. As in, it kills itself sometimes. So watch out, it's the... Your environment. These are weird guys to follow. I, I'd say, yeah, I'd definitely say it's got a better chance. Um, yeah, compared to Overwatch, uh, certainly it hasn't, like, uh, infested itself with the competitive scene. 
uh, I mean, it's day one, uh, or not day one, but like it's it's early days. People do not know strategies at all, uh, and I don't play competitive. I'm trying to actively avoid the competitive mode and just you know, give it a few goes. Um, I would definitely say uh, it's got a battle pass, which doesn't seem like uh, you know, like I don't really care about battle passes and cosmetics anymore. Um, this one's always an iffy one. This, this giant mountain of poop. Gosh, it's got it's got chunks in it. It's got nuts. Ugh. Ugh. I am the great mountain of poop. <laughs> oh, maybe one day, one day I'll play that one. I've actually never personally played through it. I've watched someone play through it. And I remember so much of it. Meanwhile, like, here I am talking about Borderlands the pre-sequel. A longer game that I played much more recently and I don't remember a thing about. You feel lucky, punk? I know, they're very different games, but, like, make sure to not play the Xbox version. No, 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 Nintendo 64 all the way. Uh, what do you think of Deadlock? Uh, I, I never, I didn't play Deadlock. I, I looked at Deadlock and I thought, hmm, it's a bit too... MOBA for me. I do prefer my, like, hero shooters, like, not my ideal. I am more an arena shooter kind of guy, and I would really love to just play, like, Quake 3 more. Um, <laughs> why, why would they censor the Great Mighty Crew? Why would they do it? Also, at least there's a checkpoint here, so at least I don't have to go through all this. Uh, did you know that you can just jump, uh, here, behind the waterfall? That's, that's not a glitch, that is 100% the way the level is designed. It just seems really odd. Um, but yeah, no, I haven't, I haven't played Deadlock, it looks a bit too Mowbray for me, but I don't think that's a bad thing for the people that it would appeal to. That is true. I mean, we had a whole level behind the waterfall. Also pots, also lots of lives. And we've got the Toy Story 2 uh, rubber duck. They gotta jump on. And you always gotta have your trusty steed. Actually, we need a good trusty elf as well. There's gold in the teeth. I wish the draw distance wasn't so rough on this level though. Because <laughs> there's other levels where it doesn't feel anywhere near this bad. But this one in particular is also... Uh, don't lose your head. Why? Why are you like this? Okay, we're going for the head. We went for the head. Uh, so if you go through here, you've got a Mario 3D land room. <laughs> there you go. Uh, but yeah, uh, would you say... Oh, oh I, I, I do really like X3. I think it is one of the, like much better 3D platformers of the, um, the, what, what gen are we up to? 5th gen? 5th generation of consoles? It's definitely, like, one of the things that makes it work so nicely is its level variety. Um, like, anytime you feel like, oh, there's a mechanic that just, it doesn't warrant its welcome, it's like, oh, but it's, it's only there for that one level. And 11 levels all trying their own things feels very nice and fresh. Uh, the Gex costumes are cool. There's a lot of, like, cool- oh my gosh. Don't die on the... Oh, there's a lot of cool 3D platformers, and I- I- it's a bit sad that they're not even in vogue. Because it feels like... Like, not even, like, no one makes 3D platform- oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> um, not that no one makes 3D platformers, but it's, like, kind of exclusively Nintendo and the odd indie deal every so often seems to do it. And, uh, I know we had Astrobot, and I can't forget Astrobot, but, uh, we also had Penny's Big Breakaway. I will, I will note that one. Uh, but there's so many other, like, you know, like, people could be making cool 3D platformers these days. Meet Bro about 3D platformers with sets. I feel like they've gotten a lot of them. But I, I do want to play another one. Cavern of Dreams. I'll give that one a, a look after the stream. Uh, pseudo regalia. I know of that one. You told me about that one, Fetty. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I do like. I did like Haddon Time. I thought it was pretty neat. I think it's Haddon Time's got some bits here and there, like 
It's got the level variety, but it also has like the. Uh, it's it's antsy. Oh my gosh, I can I can depth the field. Oh my gosh, please don't do this to me, game. Please don't do this to me, game. I'm just gonna. This is a bit embarrassing, isn't it? I know there was uh, one bit of health in here. There you go. That's all I need. Shard Lemon, some 3D platformers. My favorite 3D platformer is uh, Beetle Racing Adventure. <laughs> no, I'm trying to think what actually is my favorite, like, 3D platformer. I'd probably say Rayman 2. I'd probably say Rayman 2. Your arm. But it's, oh, it's such a shame that there's so many, like, games... I mean, we're at this, like, weird point where, like, so many game studios are making, like, so few games nowadays. They put all their eggs into one big basket, and then it's like... You're hoping that, like, people buy that new Indiana Jones game, Bethesda. Like, you have a studio that made Wolfenstein The New Order. Wolfenstein... Like... Hold on, what else did they do? They worked on level design for Doom 2016. Uh, they did Wolfenstein 2. Uh, and that was in, like... I guess three, four years. Uh, I need to play the Sly Cooper game, so I'll tell you that. That's a that's one that I missed out on entirely. I owned a PS2. We didn't have Sly Cooper. Yeah. Uh, it makes you think that there's something in these caverns, but not there. Uh, I did like Ratchet and Clank. Oh, Spyro One, Spyro One also. Actually, I'll I'll count Spyro One. Spyro One would be my my collectathon platformer of choice. Come on! There we go. I could perhaps safety net on the checkpoint down below. Ruffy in the riverside. Oh! Never mind, checkpoint here. Happy days. Because I was going to say, like, this is a spiral mountain. You can you can just fall down. Uh, there's some neat little bits here, like uh, how if you... Well, let's hit the bit here. There's something in the last minecart. I'll give it a check, hold on, because I need to come back. You hit the switch and you'll move this across. Uh, I know there's something down there. Actually, let's just jump down there and then we'll do the round back. Uh, collecting these cards is kind of annoying as well, because one of the, um... Uh, one of the remotes is there. Maybe look at it. Yeah, I'll, I'll try and give it a look. Your environment. This level's probably got like a lot of just flies hidden around in nooks and crannies, so it's probably one of the more annoying ones to get them all in. Like here are all of these pots. Uh, Gex Fire Crash, Regret for PS1, Jack and Daxa, Ratchet and Clank, Sly Cooper, PS3. Yeah, yeah, we had a little big planet. Um, but yeah, isn't it like weird that it's like, okay, now we've got the PS4, what do we have? And it's like, nothing. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Microsoft, what have we got? Nothing. <laughs> Nintendo, what have we got? Uh, some Mario platformers, and uh, they took their time to release a Kirby game, but sure. I'll accept it. I missed a comment. Oh, sorry. Uh, Ruffy on the Riverside, I will look at it after the stream. Yes. And I, I, I do need to play the Sly Cooper games, I'll tell you that. The, um, actually, I, another, I told you, I'm playing through too many games. I have like, 10 games on my backlogs under playing. Which minecart, by the way? Uh... It's glowing, and that makes it look like it does something, but I don't think it's actually interactable. Uh, and if you meant a minecart outside here, I don't think there was one out here. But there was, uh, more of this. Yeah, the, gl the glowing throws me off, though, because I'm, I, I mean, I mentioned Spyro, and Spyro is the classic of, when it glows, it's a gem. You can see it from ages away. Uh, so many other games, uh, confusingly, don't abide by that rule. So, throws me off every time. Uh, but yeah, I didn't- oh, I didn't comment on Mikey Barra's comment. Uh, he says, 
Looks like an Overwatch Marvel Rivals ships tomorrow. Much like Light of Motiram, a clear copy of Horizon Zero Dawn out of China. I mean, even the character name, Widowmaker in Overwatch versus Black Widow in Marvel Rivals, lol. Netty slash Tencent, all the same. Uh, that tweet was uh, since deleted. That's right, Croc wanted. Oh yeah, okay, Croc was my jam. Uh, I'm I'm good at Croc. I can safely say, uh, Croc is not uh, the greatest of platformers, but certainly they are competent and they are, they deserve to be mentioned in there. And the cheap viewers have come back. Uh, yes, they they're doing a, a port of Croc, which is quite spectacular. Uh, I hope people don't uh, get fancy controls. It sort of needs the original controls. It's going to feel very weird if people are moving. KO? Yeah, KO would be good too as well. Also, uh, Ty the Tasmanian Tiger. Haven't played that one. There's so many of them, which is, uh, I guess, the fun part. And they're all sort of in that era. Because it was just so easy to make games back then. Dingus McCurdy. Nobody liked him. Phil Angie's piano player. They both died in 1841. What happened in 1841? Who knows? Wyatt L. Herp Chuck. Oh, nice camera. Alright, if I get a whole tomb when I'm buried, I, I want the fire bar installed. I don't care, I'm putting the fire bar in my tomb. We put a paw back there as well, that's a bit of a cheeky spot. I think we... <laughs> he died like multiple times. Great 3D platformer, Taz wanted. I still have one more version of uh, Donald Duck going quackers to play. Yeah, whatever happened to them, so... Kinda have Klonoa, oh yeah, Dreamcast, yeah, oh. Oh yeah, it did start on the Dreamcast. This is a cheeky spot as well for the um. <laughs> That's such an interesting platform to release on the Dreamcast. It seems that a lot of games that did release on the Dreamcast, like it was very easy to just take those efforts and put it on another console as well. So I don't think it's ever a wrong move for a developer to, have, you know, use the Dreamcast. Uh, the chickens are back, which means we're at the end of the level. Unfortunately, I know there's one ledge with flies on it. Okay, come on, come on, come on. There you go. Yeah, there's so many chickens up here. It's like, oh, oh. Okay, I've just freed a chicken and I haven't grabbed this thing. Oh, yeah, Ape Escape. Yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, Ape Escape. Classic. Ape Escape gets brownie points for having a very unique uh, gameplay mechanic. But like, yeah, like all these, all these franchises that we are like reminiscing over and we hold dear memories of, and it's like, man, Game Studio, do you know how expensive it is to just make like Ape Escape? Like that's it? Is it is it really that expensive of a title to like produce? It's probably a bit more non-trivial, but Crocker. Uh, well, uh, well, to be fair, actually, 2025 is, like, not that far away now. Just a week away. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not one week. Just over three weeks, though. Isn't that terrifying? Three weeks left of the year. I wonder what's, uh, what's involved with doing the, a Croc Remaster. Yeah. Yeah, look at this. Look at this placement right here. Eagle. That is an illegal eagle. There you go. And there's uh, another bonus. I think, I think that's the third and final bonus coin. The suits will look at the current big game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I mentioned Marvel Rivals, and then I go, Oh, look at that. Marvel Rivals will make money. And it's purely because it's a gap in the market. It's people are dissatisfied with Overwatch. Overwatch is bleeding players quite easily. And the easiest thing is just literally make Overwatch again. Uh, the Mike Yabara comments I read out just then perfectly valid. Other than uh, it was a bit of a wording choice with uh, um, talking about uh, 
Black Widow copies Widowmaker, I think specifically the gameplay mechanics. Um, yeah, sure. A Legend of Dragoon on PS1 made 25 years on December 2nd. You feel lucky, punk? I just mis mistook that one for Panzer Dragoon, unless that's the same. I'm sorry, I'm out of that one. Oh, oh snap, I just fell very far, dang it. Right back to the almost beginning of the level. That's okay, we got we got a spot I need to, I need to observe anyways. So, okay, this is a real cheeky thing. So somewhere around the level, we're gonna... I think it actually might be here, maybe. Somewhere around the level, we're at the, like, beginning. But, like, on the ledge up. Panther Dragoon is- yeah, yeah. I don't know my Dragoons, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm gonna have to mentally note my way around this level, because this one part always throws me off. Donkey noises. Donkey noises. We're not getting that, we're not getting that- that life. Not doing it. Uh, but you probably saw it just there. There's a paw hiding up there. And, uh... There's this whole ledge over there. And I swear, that ledge, even though it looks like it connects to a building, it's... Not at all accessible. Anywhere. Really. I think the easiest way to actually get it is to drop down from a ledge above. Legend of Dragoon is a 4 destroy RPG. It was meant to compete with Final Fantasy VII, but came out two years later. Ah, so it competed with Final Fantasy VIII. Rip. Okay, so if that was at like 6 o'clock, I'm at 9 o'clock. I'm playing uh, through a uh, Shining Force very slowly, but I'm getting there. Do you appreciate me jumping all the time? I'm going to keep doing it. <laughs> Alright, so at some point around here, you should be able to see the previous ledge. Or maybe it's, uh, through the cave, which is kind of annoying. Uh, I... I'd probably just write, like, E or... You know, like the Winnie the Pooh character. It's like a honk at the end. Uh, but yeah, here's the kind of annoying part, is like... This is... Like... Halfway? Like, we're already, like, more of the ways across. In fact, actually, well, like, I mean, you know, here, this is right above where the, the door enters. Yeah. There's another one I found some time ago. Uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll briefly mention, oh, a Kimbot is like a Ah, I think I know of a Kimbot by name. Yes. Oh, oh my gosh. Hold on, okay. I'm going nuts. I'm going nuts over this ledge. I've got to mentally note this, and then... That is true, I am padding. This one is, like, probably the like harshest... Well, is it the harshest one? I don't know which... It's either this or the superhero level, which probably is the harshest one on, like... Getting all the flies. Okay, it is here. We've got this whole ledge here. Imagine I'm on 6 o'clock. I'm gonna try and keep the camera steady. We're now going around the 3 o'clock, throwing for content, that is true. We're now at 3 o'clock. I will now be turning left. So now I'm going at like... Well, I'm going across at 12 o'clock now. The edges by the graves? I think that makes sense. Turn it around. Okay, now I'm going down the 9 o'clock side. Yeah, like, this is, this is still a cliff. We haven't yet hit the, the cliff side for that. And at this point, I'm now fully turned around, because I have no idea which way I'm still facing, if this is still facing the same way. So now I'm going back across the 6 o'clock side, the south side of the, the mountain. This then immediately turns to the east side. Which makes sense. Does it? I don't know if this actually does make sense to the east side. I feel like Goemon games. Bakuru released sometime recently. It's actually made by some of the devs of the Goemon game. Oh, nice. Very nice. I haven't played any uh, Goemon games, but I should. Really is my 
And then we're up here. Oh, there we go. So here's the, yeah, here's the graveyard section. Yeah, I think you're right, because it's, uh... I mean, you'll see it around the outside at some point. I think. I think you'll see it. There it is, yeah, yeah. It's like such a harsh ledge to, like, <laughs> visually spot as well. One, two... I'm missing a fly. I'm missing one fly. There's one missing. Ah! I'm finding you some gourmet pipe mystic ninja feet going on on N64. Ooh, I should give that a go. Ooh, don't get yourself jammed in there. I'm missing one fly, and I know there's that bonus coin on the high ledge, but you know what? I don't trust I hit all the chickens. Because that's 100% what it is, is that I'm just missing a chicken somewhere. Yeah, uh, uh, like when I when I played this for the first, or like on a replay through recently, it was a chicken. It was 100% a chicken. Like I just was like, I'm just gonna re-go through every single chicken I can find, and then <laughs> like hit him twice before I even leave. And it could be one at the top as well. I mean, it's not like chilling in there. No. Sorry, it must have been the bees. Must have been the bees. Ah, uh, that is true. The cockroaches will kill you. Do you feel lucky, punk? I do feel lucky. No, I don't actually. I don't feel lucky because I'm having to do this. Oh yeah. Moral of the story is, uh, Marvel Rivals, uh, it's okay. Uh, it's got, uh, somewhat appealing character design. It runs like butt! I just want to say, it runs like butt. I've got a 4080. I am playing at 4K. But also, I don't think it looks tremendous. Like, for how slow it's running. It feels like it looks the same as Overwatch. Which came out ages ago and ran a lot better. Uh, this is usually the product of Lazy Unreal 5. Not lazy, I shouldn't say that, but, uh, it heavily relies on Lumen, and it does not have a good fallback for achieving the same kind of tone mapping that it really should be using, and Lumen is so inefficient. Crazy inefficient. It looks alright. I've seen other games look just about as alright as well. Like, I have a huge, not, uh, this is a, this is a wonderful segue, uh, to, um, someone linked me a video. Uh, from a YouTuber, uh, although rather it's probably a company, called Threat Interactive. Uh, they are making a game. I don't know what the game is, but uh, their YouTube channel, they just complain about graphics. But I, I do very agree with the points on the, uh, on the videos. Uh, so there was one video that says, uh, titled, Faked optim Fake Optimization in Modern Graphics and How We Hope to Save It. And, uh... One of the main points is that, uh, there's a lot of, uh, also thanks for the follow, Comrade Kiang. It's all lowercase on Twitch chat, and then it's all uppercase here, and I, I'm just like, I'm too used to reading uppercase sometimes, all the time. Um, but, uh, there's a, um, oh, what was the example he used in the video? Uh, it was, uh, I can't, can't recall it specifically. Um, I have this feeling most AAA game companies aren't really a fit. Well, that's exactly the case of the, the point of the video is like, you know, there's a lot of it's good enough and uh, it's in the engine so you might as well use it. And like, they're not really doing that many like fancy features. And uh, one example game that uh, was highlighted in the video was The Finals, uh, which while running on Unreal 5 actually runs on a fork of Unreal 5 that NVIDIA maintains. And various implementations of some features are actually opted out for NVIDIA specific versions, which run tremendously better, apparently. Uh, many of the effects rely on a temporal, um, or like a complete temporal pipeline for some graphics, so we're all aware of temporal anti-aliasing, which is indeed uh, the worst thing imaginable. Uh, anti-aliasing being the method of taking jagged edges, like seeing the... Uh, you know, the, the graves, the tombstones, right now, and go on, how do you make that look smoother? If you ever play a Nintendo 64 game on real hardware, that's a decent attempt. Render the game at a higher resolution, smoothen down the edges. Then they realize, well, yeah, we could just render the edges at a higher resolution. And that leads into fun techniques like 
uh, SMAA, which is generally the gold standard. It identifies the edges correctly and does the work pretty nicely for that, without really any big compromise. Um, temporal anti-aliasing is interesting because effectively it uh, takes... What does it do? It renders the game at ever so slightly different angles and then uh, effectively over time it will, I guess, trend towards a certain, like, value. It will, it will, you know, the averaging of what it is. Uh, oh yeah, you use AI. Well, to be fair, I prefer the AI over the, the temporal stuff, although AI is still very temporal based right now. As in it will, like, there it is. There it is. Uh, I will now not go for that, because that remote is always there. Actually, hold on, we need the bonus coin as well. The bonus coin, let's not avoid that. Yeah, oh yeah, the blurriness. It's insane. It's insane on temporal anti aliasing. And I legit, anytime I play a game, I really try to just turn off the, the temporal anti aliasing. I think when I played one of the F1 games and temporal became the only option, it was very, very upset. I was like, what is going on here? Um, but yeah, like, that's the problem with temporal, is that it, it converges to blurriness, it, it, um, uh, what's the term? It dithers. Uh, that's not, I don't know if that's the right phrase. Like, it, it'll, it'll jitter between frames, where, like, things will render one way one frame and a different way the next frame if the object is slightly moving. Um, and generally there's lots of, uh, then there's lots of techniques that actually go, hey, well, people are using temporal anti-aliasing, so why don't we just do lots of other techniques with temporal methods? And, uh, that ends up causing, uh, weird, like, artifacting, like, bloom and... Uh, ref other reflections and lots of other things are all based around temporal effects as opposed to just doing it right or even better implementing the temporal effects separately because nothing stops your pipeline which uses temporal anti-aliasing from using uh hold on actually i've got to oh yeah i've got to drop down on the ledge nothing stops your you know an effects using a temporal like sampling choice from working in a game that doesn't have temporal anti-aliasing, hopefully, hopefully, I think some people will probably say, uh, "There's, you know, there's probably some SMA." Don't want to interrupt you. Something happened. Perfect material. Be oh boy, I do like a good rant. Go watch this guy's video though. Uh, Threat Interactive. There's some good stuff there. Look at that. We spent 37 minutes on the first remote. But fortunately, I, this is the cards remote. Uh, oh, he sent me the VX Twitter link. I kid you not, itch.io has been taken down by Original Funko because they use some trash AI-powered brand protection software called Brand Shield LTD that created some bogus phishing report to our registrar at I Want My Name who ignored our response and just disabled our domain. What? Hey there. You're looking mighty tired after a long day on the prairie. Are you one of them urban cowboys? Shucks no, darling. I was thinking of heading into town, getting my tongue scraped. Hey, quick draw. Cool. I have another idea. Why don't you get back to rescue? Rescue, smash you. This lizard wants heck. What the heck? What the heck? Oh, boy. Okay. Uh, Alright, first of all, uh, domain takedowns are one of the absolute worst things in the world. I really, really, really hate domain takedowns. Because, uh, this, this is a, a tie into dead internet theory. There are so- well, it's not quite dead internet theory, but it's like, the internet absolutely does not have backup domain names. If you- if you- refer to a website, and that website ceases to exist via its domain name, there is no reinforcement that the domain name is still, like, you know, w if there's a new place for it. So say for example, uh, and, and this one's always the example I bring up, if GameFAQs.com stops existing, so much of the internet will panic. I wish GameFAQs.com let you scrape the site, they IP ban you very quickly, and it's kind of annoying. Um, and yeah, Funko. Funko, of all people. I, I, I don't think it's, you know, you really gain too much from, like, singling out Funko here, but also, ugh, ugh. Uh, they do have some follow-up tweets as well. 
Uh, I hope you're having a nice Sunday evening. Well, good thing it's Monday night for me, but sure, yeah. Um, and uh, also for transparency, we did take the disputed page down as soon as we got the notice, because it's not worth fighting stuff like that. Regardless, our registrar's automated system likely kicked to disable the domain since no one read our confirmation or removal. That was an easy remote, wasn't it? Um... But yeah, like, I mean, the classic, the servers, uh, Let's get it on. hold on, yeah, yeah, like, if you have, actually, here's a, oh, here's a thing, let me, uh, quickly try and dig, let me see if, uh, the site still exists, because I have a lot of, I have a local DNS cache, and I potentially may have this cached, dig itch.io, uh, no, I might be getting no response. Oh no, I've got one. 45.33.107.66 Lots of websites, by the way, you can try accessing them from the IP and then you'll get exactly what I just got, which is an Nginx 404 because Nginx is expecting you to access it via the host name. And a lot of people, including myself, uh, actually I think I know how to do it with curl, but a lot of people do not know how to get like the internet working towards certain IP addresses with certain host names. You can you can get an IP address and everything I self host, same deal. You can you can figure out my IP address. You can look up the DNS, but if you try going to the IP address, you're just going to get the um, you know the Nginx 404 because that's how I handle it. I only handle serving the website when you try accessing the website. That allows me to have multiple websites under the same IP. That's the reason why I do that. Also, just as a heads up, uh, if you actually do try doing that, uh, that's a reverse proxy, so that's not really me. Don't think that IP is really me. The joys of using Tailscale. If you can, yeah, if you can still access itch.io, uh, this c could potentially be uh, your DNS uh, provider hasn't repealed this. So, for example, that I just said. That still works for me. So, um, if your yeah, if your DNS resolver hasn't like invalidated the address, which it probably will over the next 24 hours, which is going to be a bit of a shame. Um, although, actually, if you are for reference, uh, until they get that domain name back, if you do have uh, the host file. So, okay, here's a fun thing as well. Um, if you're on Windows. Uh, try to edit, uh, what is it? It's, um, uh, C Windows System 32, uh, no. C Windows, uh, oh gosh, what's the, what's the, why can I not see the Windows folder? Oh, because I'm still on Linux, whoops. Uh, C Windows System the, not system 32 it's uh host lucky punk? i've forgotten that there's a host file on on windows and the main reason why i mentioned the host file is because um what that lets you do is that that lets you type in a hard ip address to always resolve uh when you use a host name so you can type in itch.io and, and set it so that it's always uh that one ip address that i read out and i'll read it out again four five dot three three dot one oh seven dot one six six you can set that and that will mean that when your computer tries to resolve itch.io it always goes to that ip which means uh that they've lost their domain that server still is there and will respond to itch.io requests so you should always be able to access the website if that's the case obviously you can't do that on phones that easily and uh there's a Linux way of doing it, so don't worry about that. And I think there's a Mac way of doing that. So all desktop should be pretty fine with that. And it's not really, it's not like, you do have to, yeah, most people won't know how to do that. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, it feels hacky as well, because I just said it's in the Windows folder. Uh, but trust me, it is a safe file to edit. It's, it is meant to be edited. But it's, it's mostly there to get around this. It's to really do something that probably you know, like, you need your DNS to align. Everyone's DNSs need to align, so... And, and or, or alternatively, you can self-host a DNS server and serve it like that. Um, I recommend Blocky. Blocky's my choice. I like using Blocky. Uh, speaking of Blocky, we need to blow up this. 
I think it was, oh yeah, it was around the outside, around the outside. But, oh boy, yeah. Oh, man, you found a good topic for me to rant on, I'll tell you that. Whew. So, uh, okay, so the AI takedown, uh, this is, okay. <laughs> Thanks, Lemon. Thanks, Lemon. I mean, uh, yeah, it's... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if people on RA were already talking about it, but yeah, that's that's fresh breaking. That's like three hours ago, so before the stream, but uh, I had a few topics queued up, and that was not one of them, so. Check it out, another bonus stage. Uh, well, I... the easiest thing is that if the domain registrar uh, responded to that kind of message, uh, hopefully... No one has claimed the domain in the meantime. That'd be real scummy if it did. Um, also, don't worry about killing the chickens. It's all about freeing chickens. I always lose track of where the chickens are in this one, though. Um, but yeah, you should be able to register with another registrar. And, uh, I think they might be in a bit of, like, contention on whether it's a freely able to use domain. But, I hate the idea of, uh, domain registers taking access of domains away. Uh, this is my politics take of the day. Uh, I remember that happening with Kiwi Farms. And Kiwi Farms has a strong reputation, uh, but I think that the idea of taking away a domain registrar is a powerful misstep. And this is the problem, is that... It, you, we shouldn't be able to wield that kind of power. And especially in an automated fashion. Oh, um, that's just so... Yeah, if someone claimed that website... Yeah, if someone claims the website in the meantime, now you have someone who, for all intents and purposes, legitimately claims the domain. Like, what do you do? Like, you gotta somehow deal with that. And sometimes they'll just be like, Oh, you want it back? He has to pay us like fifty thousand million dollars, and that's not a fun scenario to be in. We have a winner! I'm, I swear I'm going to be losing my voice over the stream. Oh no! Um, no, I. Nice password, by the way. I don't think this is how Funko falls. Like, it's. I don't think it's good, like reputation. But uh, if there's one thing I've learned, it's that. When big companies don't mention things, their reputation never gets hit. Cough, cough, Nintendo. So check it out, a secret level! Lock and load, little lizard! Alright, we're gonna have to collect all 50 coin flies. This one is kind of tight on timing. It's a fun little level though. I like it. Off the outfit. Oh, uh, Blub, you're gonna mention, uh, uh, idle animation, so I'll go back for that. <laughs> the turkey approach. Yeah, exactly. Uh, for reference, uh, I've grabbed that little firefly, the red fly. I'm not activating him just yet. There's a very big reason why I'm not doing this just yet, but, uh, the path to getting these flies is not too bad. Just gotta make sure you get them, I guess. Uh, uh, there's probably an idle animation for this one as well, yeah. I love the, these, like, all these signs all over the place. You weren't expecting, like, the ancient tombs to be basically a supermarket. Yeah, I wish the pirate one did. Something with the hook. Just climb on ribs. Don't mind me. I love the aesthetic of this level. I wish there was, like, more of it. Because these uh, hub bonus levels actually are, like, one-time ideas. They don't reappear. Which is a bit, uh, sad. <laughs> on strike chicken sacrifice. Oh, nice. Uh... Yeah, I I do wish itch itch.io at the very least they hopefully they're a registered LLC like they should have legal protection because this is actually oh my gosh by the way oh boy um 
because this is legit, like, this is uh, a complete unfair freaking, like, AI takedown of the whole site. Because, here's the fun thing, uh, your grounds to copyright dismissal and automatic systems uh, do not actually grant you the, like, takedown rights. Uh, by the way, use this thing here, go in first person, and shoot at this gold statue. Which should set it on fire, and then it sinks. It then makes this Indiana Jones platform that you can barely see. That oh my gosh, by the way. This is what I mean. Oh, I'm gonna lose it. I'm gonna lose it. But the, the thing was there. So the problem is now I've got to climb up the stage again. How about let's just look at the auto animation. I'll just like re-roll this. Uh, but yeah, like, um, YouTube DMCA is the same boat. It's like, in theory, what YouTube is doing is they're attempting to facil facilitate some automatic system with a bit of, you know, like, you can counterclaim, you can stop people from, like, you know, like, oh, if they're wrong, then you can tell them they're wrong. Uh, but ultimately, the thing at the end of the YouTube system automates the legal process of suing someone over this. Because ultimately, that's what you need to do. You need to sue someone, and then go to court, and then they have to take it down and pay you damages. DMCA takedowns are an entirely circumventory mechanism made by companies to basically allow for automated systems to not actually go through a legal process. Like, hey, you know, we have domains and we know people will host copyrighted content, so instead of going through the law and getting us in trouble all the time, we will actively just take down things that get requests. That's what they do. Now, I don't hate that on its own. But I hate it when it- well, actually, I do, actually. Um, but, uh, I especially hate it because it is a ripely abused system. I don't think humans should be- sorry, I don't think machines should be automating this anywhere near as much as they are. I think that, like, if a human steps in and says, no, the machine is wrong, I think it has to have a human overrule this. There are so many systems, like YouTube, where you can have a machine tell you you are copyright violating something, uh, three times. You have to, you provide the counterclaim, you then provide the, uh, like, the, the, like, proper one. And then there's, like, the third one, which is like that, hey, actually send me to court if you're wrong. And only at that point does a human from their end need to sign it. And I think this is the worst system in the world for every single, oh my gosh, for every single one of the, oh, ranting about DMCA, holy crap. But, like, ah, oh, this gets me so riled up. This gets me so riled up. Because, like... What does this- what- what power do we have as, like, the little men? Big company- well, like, the power you have as a little man is by rocking with companies and- and platforms that don't have any of this automated DMCA. You can still- and- and most websites should still have, hey, if you're, you know, uh, 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 well, I- I guess if- if your content hosted in the US, first of all, Big company making rules that benefit little big companies. Shocking. Well, yeah, DMCA is like, it is a big company law. I'm still personally opinionated on that. Um, yeah, a AI is definitely like, it's been weaponized, and I don't think it's exclusively uh, AI as well, because like, it's really just any algorithm. You know, like, we've we've all complained about that. Oh my gosh, by the way. At least I picked up the, <laughs> the clapper, I don't have to go there. I mi yeah, I missed the fly. Yeah, yeah. I hope I've got enough time, but falling always throws us into jeopardy a bit. Alright. There we go. Uh, the kind of annoying thing is that all of these are in a swimming section. Uh, there we go. And then just remember, I gotta pick up the thing in the time limit as well. Good. We're golden. Alright, it's right there on the other side of the room. Nice. First try. <laughs> Alright. I love the smell of bug spray in the morning. Smells like victory. That's it. That was the whole point of getting the clip, was just for that. <laughs> um but yeah, for so for reference, comrade, it that 
that secret clip. If you didn't know that was there, now you do. Not not the last bonus stage, but the other three have them. And it's just, nothing will ever tell you that that's there. And nothing ever commends you for getting it. But you'll feel a sense of pride and accomplishment for getting that. Uh, yeah. We did, we did the idle animation for that. I sat there for 40 seconds, so <laughs> I saw it there. I'm going back for this one. Don't worry. Don't worry. Uh, but yeah, you'll have another problem. Uh, someone uh, biases the human. Uh, they can say, you know what? Yeah, and then usually they have... Co okay, so the the one thing about a human having responsibility... Sorry, it must have been the, bean. the the thing about the human... Oh my gosh, there it goes. Ooh. Legendary. Legendary squat right there. You'll have to go back in the VOD. <laughs> this is an amazing spot. Um, the one thing at least is that when there is a human, there is a human in the law who is, like, filing their name for suing. If someone provides a fake name, then you sort of win the case by default, basically, because, like, that person is just, like, committing perjury, and therefore, like, they're in the wrong. Uh, not the first time I go to the VOD. <laughs> um... So, when, yeah, if you ever do the YouTube system, uh, it is terrifying to have to basically put yourself in that scenario. But ultimately, and I really do wish that, hey, like, if I lose this, like, you know, like, I don't want, you, I don't know, it happened to me with RA, especially, yeah, yeah. Uh, also, at boss fight. It was a boss fight. It's Donkey Kong 64. It's Croc. There's a lot of boxing ring boss fights. Uh, this guy is the easiest boss fight in the world. Is is a very straight. Oh, other than I'm dead. Hold on, you don't even have to participate in this fight at all. Also, uh, can do we have enough time for an idle animation? I don't think there is enough time to see if there is one. Oh, other than he fought on me. Nah. We're not going to get time for an idle animation. That was it, by the way. Uh, I sent a message about six months ago and haven't received this much. Ah, oh, rip. Hey, Spartacus. Where did you learn those moves? Ever been to a Turkish bathhouse? Hey, that uh, wasn't me. I swear. Besides, I'm about to try out some new holds on you, my precious pin doctor. Easy there, Nacho Man, or I'll elbow drop you. Ah. Now get back to work. She's probably cracking up after that one. <laughs> well, yeah. Ah, big rant. Big rant. Good, good topic. Good topic. Uh, this whole world is done. Oh well, that's this world over. Oh well, the next one begins. Into Slappy Valley. So this opens up purely because I did the boss fight, and the boss fight requires remotes. So rinse and repeat this for three other worlds. Uh, not into Funky Town just yet, but uh, uh, fortunately, there are four. I've just completely wandered straight around this one. Uh, there are four worlds in this level. And with AI sign Yeah, I... Like, yeah. And it's 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 Armageddon with AI in, in the sense of... Um, it's easier to make algorithms to actually do these takedowns, which I hope people direct towards the big companies that do abuse this. Uh... I don't think it's right to say, like, you know, fight fire with fire in the sense of, like, just take down Funko Pop stuff incorrectly. But what I mean is that when companies do indeed take things down uh, incorrectly, also just for reference, I'm very certain I got all the things in the previous level. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Alright, stuff looking like YouTube Steam support. Ah, uh, I... Uh... I try to be a bit more mild on retro achievements just because uh, it is a volunteer thing. They're not a multi-billion dollar company. Also, I generally have a good track record with Steam support, so I won't rip on them. But YouTube... Uh, I'm not big enough to have a dedicated YouTube-like shield, which is kind of unfortunate. I am in the YouTube program. I can... I can talk to someone, eventually. 
but YouTube is a frustrating system and I've been through plenty of those uh, people falsely claiming things. Like for example, I always I always upload my VODs, like the, I do the Twitch export, and the Twitch export often gets copyright claims on things that are just completely unrelated, but they don't go for it the second time on the actual, like, re-upload I do, which is very curious. I just thought that's interesting. Um, so there's your uh, end uh, boss fight, the, uh, the Lizard of Oz. Uh, 22 remotes, which we are plenty past, and in fact, actually, I think you only need 30 to beat the game. Caution, you ain't in Kansas anymore. Being a volunteer, uh, no, I don't think, yeah, I don't think a, a poor treatment like, if you, if you are being treated poorly, yes. Um, but I think it does explain a poor, like, service level agreement. as Or rather, a, a long service level agreement of, like, how long does it take to respond. Troy, sorry. Um, if, yeah, if, if feedback is long or uh, alternatively consensus is always hard because when it is a volunteer system, it's kind of like who sets the rules, the volunteers, and sometimes you are a bit at the mercy of them, so... Uh, but then I'd also say, well... That... I was gonna say, is that victim blaming? Sort of. Um, it could be better, but I can't pin it on anything. Toy Story and Troy should have both been... Yes, yeah. So we're just getting the, the flies in the hub world, which is a lot simpler this time, because it's a lot smaller of a, of a hub, and we don't have any weird jumps going on, I don't think. But we'll see all the stuff. This is the infamous Grease level. The very infamous Grease level. Hey, I mean, I'll get you overturned one way if that's... <laughs> if that's, uh... If they're in the wrong, then it needs to be overturned. So, uh, and for reference, that infamous Grease level is not in the Nintendo 64 version. It's a completely different level. So if you ever played the Nintendo 64 version, you're going to wonder what the heck I'm playing in that one. Also, did I say there's uh, four levels in this one? There's three levels in this hub. There were four in the previous one, and then we had two in the first and two in the last one. Uh, it's it's replaced with a, a, a different level. So it it's still mythology themed, but the layout is very different. And it has different power-ups and everything. Like, it, it's just completely changed idea. Uh, so we're ranting here too. I, I, I get the frustration, so I get it. There's a PC. I think the PC version is based on this one, though. Also, this is a hard to spot wall if you aren't familiar with it. And uh, the uh, the next level is in there. What's the easiest way to grab that? Ah. I see the paw prints. There we go. Uh, I'm not showing off the Nintendo 64 version, unfortunately, because that means I have to play through the Nintendo 64 version up to that point. Um, so I'll leave that as an exercise for the viewer, um, or just play the retro achievement set for the Nintendo 64 version, because you'll find out yourself. Uh, or I'll play the Nintendo 64 version again on its own at some later date. I haven't ruled out ever playing games on different platforms. Sorry, did I say pause? I meant remotes. Because you need so many remotes to get to this point, basically. Probably not too many, like, what was it, 13 for the boss fight? Uh, and yeah, here's our last... What, last level, sorry? A second level. Which is the, uh, the anime channel! That's right! <laughs> that level, I hate! There's some weird cyber chicken. Of this giant G. What does it stand for? Uh. Poop or scoop? <laughs> uh. So, speaking of the wealthy and powerful, 
Um, has anyone seen Hawk to a coin? At <laughs> my channel, I like, but it's weird. It, ah, uh, yeah, it. I hate it purely for getting the paws, or put purely for getting the um the flies. Sorry, the flies. Uh, the bonus secret level is just hidden around there, which is very curious, because uh, you have to wander this way. Uh, yeah, a Hawk Tour coin. Uh, anyone know about that? Uh, Hawk Tour is a phenomena I do not understand. Oh, there's more than one anime channel? Oh, yeah. Uh, I do not understand Hawk Tour. At all. Uh, I am... Borderline Zuma, and yet, I'm out of the loop. I don't get it. I think all she said, yeah, all she said in that interview was... I hawk to her, and I spin on that thing. That's all she said. Uh, somehow, she has become a, like, uh, a national icon of some sorts in the US. Uh, and I mean, there's something novel. There's always, you know, this, this isn't a new thing for someone to, for, yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, I get, I, I get the, the onomatopoeia, yeah. Um, yeah, the, the amount of, like, commercialization is, like, beyond me. It's like, you, you remember like Hamster Dance? And Hamster Dance had a music album and like ringtones and that was it. But you know what? That's in the spirit of, I guess, the music. Uh, I don't think it really like went that far. But you know what I mean? Like what's another one that like, another one that's not necessarily commercial, but it, I, I did it again. I just went slightly off angle there. Um, I'm trying to think of another one where it's like monetization <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a classic American thing. I, I wouldn't say exclusively American, but definitely like, you know, when, when something becomes famous, it's gonna make money, and the moment it starts making money, usually it should be uncool. So who's consuming Hawk Tour media? People are watching her podcast, Talk Tour, which granted gets brownie points just for the name, at least. Skibbity Toilet, yeah, uh, yeah. And they do make money off Skibbity Toilet as well, so. I don't hate Skibbity Toilet because I, uh, my, my original YouTube videos are YouTube poops. <laughs> like, like that, that is the thing I grew up on. Skibbity Toilet is just like, surreal YouTube poops. Actually no, it's just YouTube poops. YouTube poops are already surreal. I grew up with like, Arthur's throbbing hit and like, other just like, amazing like, word salad videos. Of just like, man, this is funny because freaking like, I did not expect all these things to fit together in a rather seamless way. Oh my gosh. Is there a better way to get up here? Maybe we just try and do a jump. Maybe that's actually the, the strat. Uh, I love them back in the game. I am the gang and stuff. I, yeah, I, I made some. I never, well, I say I never took off, but like... The original, you can go to my channel, sort by age oldest, and there it is, Rabid Fun is number number one most viewed on my channel still. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's like actually, it's more than half a million, I'll say that. None of my videos get half a million views. Boing, boing, boing. Wow, no, I need to do the jump kick and I'm just sucking it, wow. Uh, Skippy is Gregorian. <laughs> Uh, can't be any yeah, exactly. Modern day Gmod. Uh, good source filmmaker. Um, but yeah. Not Gregor. Georgian. <laughs> George. Not Gregorian. Listen, it's one letter off. And, and a bit of spelling. From the country of Georgia. <laughs> Not the country of Gregoria. There you go. First try. First try. The Hotel Mario. Hotel Mario is evergreen. When are we getting CDI support on retro achievements? Yeah. <laughs> the weird obsession with old YouTube poop. Uh, I mean, they, yeah. I, how would I put it? I think they were great because the delivery was always very stilted. And there was an air of mystery because no one had played. Like, the Wand of Gamelon. No one knows actually what is in that game. You'll see some like all cutscenes because at the time people would upload like all cutscenes and it would not be all the cutscenes. There'd be just some 
elusive, like, extra one. The the line of dialogue of, like, Link saying, You can make me do the dark walk! Cool, huh? You can- you, that line was just gone from the internet for, like, the first, like, three years. There was absolutely no dark walk mention. These platforms are a bit of a lie, aren't they? Are there any- uh, DOSes after, um... Uh... There's another console first. Commodore 64's first. And then DOS. That's a publicly announced roadmap. That's not a, a hidden thing. But it's, it's, it's on a forum. Yeah, they're going to do Commodore 64 first. I, maybe they wrote it first. And they wrote we at the bottom. <laughs> there we go. Nice jump. Uh, here's our last level. This is some lore. <laughs> yeah, there, there's a forum page out there that's uh, got the, the right things on it. So, Well, okay. So that's uh, all the paws in Slappy Valley, but I haven't got the flies yet. Yeah, the Commodore 64 is cool, and, and actually, it makes sense to get that out first before DOS. I keep thinking that there's more, like, up the beanstalk, but I don't think there is, so... And we've got two rooms. So, I, I might be missing the chickens or the bunnies. Oh, there's, there's one. There's two. Just keep wandering around, but it's most likely that. I think these bunnies are toast. Probably some outside then. Uh, Bizhawk Gaming, remember, I want to be the guy. Oh, I want to be the guy. That's great, yeah. Had to think of it now. Castle of the guy. They use some music. Old C64 game with an absolutely banger. Amazing soundtrack. I do like me a good soundtrack, though. I'll tell you that. Man, is it really a rabbit I'm missing? One whole fly, wherever he may be. I do not know where. Make a set for, for Monty on the run. I suck at these kinds of games though. I'm actually, uh, yeah, like, I really want to like do another set of a game that I, I know. Because I feel like I'm so rusty right now. Because I did um, the SingStar subset between my recent set of um, Choroku Holiday Puzzle and um, uh, game Lead Storm Rally 2011. And I actually feel like I just like, I don't know how to design a set right now because those two games I don't actually know. Uh, not, a, not a Commodore 64 game, as in I need to do Hexen. I need, I need Hexen. Because I know my Hexen. And I know how to design a set for Hexen. It's in my head, I just need to make it happen. Uh, but yeah, no, I've legit, yeah, I I don't know any Commodore 64 games um, to really like stand out with, unfortunately, so. I think that's, that's part of it is like, uh, some of it's like my experience, or it's like, if I don't have experience with a, uh, particularly a console, but also like, a game, I love that, just ear spam. The ZX Specky. <laughs> Same rules apply. Oh, it was that the whole time. It was that one. Uh, I'm going to do the Grease level. And we'll see how we go. The Grease level is where my dreams go to die. I actually think the Grease level is just going to take the whole stream. Let's get it on. Let's get it on. So here we go. Unsolved Mysteries. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> this, uh, this is a, this is a level. So. Nice. Alright, idle animation, we're doing it right away. <laughs> Will he do it? Will he do it? Do an idle animation on me. Do it. I don't think he's got a special one. It's what makes us CBT. Hey, are you guys playing cards? Alright, so what makes this level uh, CBT is uh, one, this. Uh, also, these flies that are just in the air. 
And then you're gonna see that there's some real obnoxious jumping. There's some real obnoxious jumping for a lot of the level. And it makes it very hard to get all the flies. It's not the worst. Like, I don't think any of these levels are, like, particularly irritating. Like this, for example, you're like, oh. <laughs> I could take a few cracks at this one. Ah, uh, you do have time for a quick drink. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll get into that one at some point. Also, yeah, the Playboy Mansion keeps getting mentioned. That's not a pit I can fall down, though. Um, I picked up another one. And it is a wall you can climb over like that as well. Uh, did I grab the last one floating there? I guess I did. I guess I did. Okay. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of flies that are just hard to get to. And uh, on top of that, I find the uh, the one remote about getting the three golden fruits is very annoying. So, uh, your gimmick with the level is that you'll stand on these pedestals and uh, you'll become strong. Or you can push these for 10 seconds. The music is fun though, yes. Uh, also, you've got croc platforms. Uh, I will come back for that. Actually, no, I won't. I will get that right now. Uh, and yes, if you fall off any ledge, good luck. Toga, toga, toga. Hey, I was like, we can definitely get up here. Uh, that is a route to nearly the end of the level. Nearly. But if I don't drop down, I can make my way back without having to wander around the whole level. So that'll be fun. Uh, but yeah, there's a couple of things that are kind of annoying about this one. Uh, the falling off ledges, the, these snakes, which I... Uh, no, no flies, okay. Uh, Jason and the Argonauts. Am I going to cite another XCC song? Uh, this Ice Breath, which... Uh, are you ready for this... Uh, so what you gotta do is you gotta freeze these fellas and then Spyro 2 your way <laughs> Kinda the, the pushing never works right. It doesn't feel right There's a checkpoint up there, so at least you can you can snag a lot of checkpoints in this one. Skeletons must be chasing. Yes um, As strong and also blue right now uh, you can go around to these Pedestals and break them down and you want to break down all the pedestals around this area because you're going to need to. The stop motion is great. That movie holds up. It, it feels a little, it feels very dated because of the technology, but it holds up in the sense of you wouldn't pick how old it is. You just pick that it's kind of old. So scroll across here. Scroll across here. Also, at the very least, I should be maxing out my health in this level. So, at least we got that. We got a statue up here. There are five statues to break in the level. So you're gonna need to make sure you get those. There's a bag of chicken. Uh, hop down on the inside. We got this guy. Uh, he dies to a butt stomp. Oh boy, okay. <laughs> Whew. Whew. <laughs> All right. Uh, and yes, you saw that uh, paw, so I'm gonna go get the paw. Okay, you can't say that. Ah, uh, yeah. I, I mean, right at the beginning of the level. I mean, I would have just like discounted getting the um, getting the the flies and just gone for a you know a regular remote at that point. Uh, I need to drop down on this ledge in the right way, like directly under me. There we go. Uh, but you're also going to need to be strong again. It's it's not very visible, but you're going to need to be strong again. Because, uh, uh... Oh, nice. Gex is self-referential. He is! If they ever make a new Gex game, can he go what could possibly go wrong? Like, <laughs> a lot of the time? Just for... <laughs> 
just for the fun. Just for the fun of mentioning Bubsy indirectly all the time. So bounce across these platforms. And, uh, yeah, you need the strong just to break these. The reason why Bubsy is wrong, though, is because, one, his puns suck. And two, uh, his, his games suck. Making, like, the game itself self-referential, self as in, like, aren't these level designers wonderful? Gex doesn't need to stoop down that low. Gex just needs to quote movies and how sort of bizarre its concept is and call it a day. And Bubsy got two mod get that is true. And yet Croc doesn't have a remaster. I wonder when the Gex trilogy is coming out. Ah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, if it's this year, I'd be shocked. I, I, I mean, Bubsy 3D makes me want to, like, you know, cease existing. It's that bad. I really can't drive myself to play it. Um, and I played Superman 64, but Superman 64 is such a curiosity. Uh, bounce on this tree, and it's kind of awkward. And there's a golden apple up here. Where you'll see a one, maybe show up. And I say maybe, because it's possible that the game will just not acknowledge you picking up these apples. Nice, by the way. I'm saying it's all Greek to me. This oh my gosh, the second one. The second one. The Gex stream brings out all the Russian website. The Apple of Discord. Yeah, yeah there's, there's three of them. We'll, we'll see when I pick up the other ones, but... Yeah, worst case, I will just go for another one. It's just, I find, when I'm going through the whole stage, it makes a lot of sense to get the, um, the fruit one. Uh, so there's one for, uh, uh I mean, you saw the, the TV spot. That's for, uh, destroying all five, uh, statues. Which involves then going back in the level. What a weird jump. I'll just do this one, I guess. See, at least this one, it's like... Oh no, oh no, three, okay. Yeah, these jumps get a bit wild, we'll just say. And I... Oh, oh, oh. Oh, what a unique and novel way to get around that area. <laughs> uh, so I'm saving the, the freeze fly. Yeah, this platform starts to get a bit, bit, uh, wary. Where was that checkpoint again? Oh, rendering. Zed fighting. Oh, never mind. Although I don't have the power to ban these bots, I'm definitely... Yeah, it's good to report them, yeah. The problem is they make... Uh, there's so many of them, it's, it's so hard to keep up. And they only ever post once, like... I find no reason. Uh, this, this is me giving ammunition. If you if if they post twice, I'd definitely be like, oh, okay, sure, ban them. But when they only post once, it's like, well, the ban doesn't get you very far there. So here is. That's uh, that's all you need in order to get this remote, and. Uh, there you go. Let's see if I can push this guy. Nice, nice. Uh, this jump I hate. It just feels so odd. And and he breaks. He, the skeleton breaks real easily. And I'm very certain this is how you're meant to jump up here as well. But sometimes Gex will just jump really high. And you'll get it. And sometimes he won't. And you won't get it. And it's kind of annoying. Fortunately, we've got a way to get back here. But unfortunately, the f the freeze, the like the fly to freeze them is all the way back here. And that means you're gonna have to, yeah, yeah. This is this is one of the roughest jumps. And there's multiple like sections of the level that I don't like to. Oh my gosh! By the way. Oh my gosh! By the way. Oh my gosh! By the way. Oh my gosh, by the way. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that that way again, but sure. Oh, 
Whoops. I'll try the right side of the ledge, but it feels like it's meant to be quite uniform. Like there's not really a low side to it. Ah, see, there you go. And it feels like, oh, that's for a paw, you know? Like, that's not that bad. Uh, no, there's a tree here. And the second apple is all the way up this tree. Ah, you see what I mean? It says one. This is, yeah, this is 100% like, glitched. So, uh... Doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> okay, we'll have to do the, the apples on a, a second attempt. Oh, never mind, I guess we'll... Going back. Oh no no, we're not going back here. Yeah, there's a paw here. There's a bonus coin here, and then if you drop too far, you're all the way back. Which you probably have to do once. But hey, I'm still going for the flies. The flies are still on the table. The geckos have paws. I thought they had pads. Welcome to the Sultan of Brunei's bathroom. Sultan of Brunei's bathroom. Also, look at this mean platform placement right here. That's right, we gotta backtrack to the strength platform. Yeah, this level is all about the, the backtracking and making sure that you got the power-ups that you need in the right places. And that's, that's why it gets a bit annoying. I don't think it's that bad. But honestly, yeah, they, they could make some of these, like, power-up locations a bit more forgiving. I, ironically, not the place after the, the ledge here. Alright, drop down to the bottom, push this. No, no, let me push it, let me push it. I think it's in place. Alright, cool. Nice. Cool, very nice. There you go. Uh, there's all these clouds down here, but other than having a paw right there. Interesting. Also, casually over a gap, which uh, gives me a good degree of anxiety every time I try doing it. And then obviously at the far end, it's just, it's just a weird safety net. But it looks so weird! Gives you anxiety, doesn't it? Yeah. I had it. <laughs> uh, and now we have to do a karate kick jump. And then we're good. We're good. We're on the other side here. Uh, they still haven't given the checkpoint, by the way. Uh, same rules apply. Karate kick over there. Ah, uh, look. Ah, this jump. Oh, boy. I recently saw Therapy Gecko live. Are we going for our uh, gecko badge? Oh, nice. I fell. Now I gotta do those jumps again, and I've only got two hits, so I gotta make sure I don't die. Uh, I don't know that channel, no. What does he talk about? Because Gecko was mentioned. He doesn't talk about Gex, I'd imagine, right? Th therapy Gex. Yeah, Therapy. Random stuff. Ooh, I do like random stuff. If he says in, uh, things in the Gex accent, it's even better. There we go. Oh, I hate these croc platforms, I tell ya. I know of Therapy Gecko. Ooh, very nice. Okay, we're on this ledge. Uh, here's something a bit odd. Uh, there's actually a, a puzzle right here, and it's possible to push this pillar off into space. And then, uh, not be able to bring it back. Which isn't the end of the world. Uh, but it is for a bonus coin. So you do need to push this the right way. Uh, a bit like those old TV shows. Uh, oh, hold on. I'm going to push this for a hot second, and then no more pushing. Uh, old TV shows from the late 90s, early 2000s, where you could call the Oh, those ones, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are good fun. You still have that some, uh, nowadays with, like, community radio. They're good fun. At least if they let you talk on it. 
It's not, yeah, it's not much of a puzzle. It's more of a puzzle than anything else in the game, though, I'll tell you that. Whoa, whoa, what was that camera turn? Oh, that nearly threw me off, didn't it? Uh, I don't know where exactly you put this. I think here, yeah, here. Good thing the, <laughs> good thing the pillar has lights. What? What? Oh, snap. It <laughs> phased out from existence under me. <laughs> okay, I got the coin. I got the coin. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, boy. Ooh. I was a little worried. I was a little worried. I was a little worried. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> All right. Good thing as well. The coin stays if I die. I don't have to push that ever again. I'm gonna say 100% the Nintendo 64 set. Not doing that today, though. The infamous Grease level. I tell ya. <laughs> oh. So really, all you need to do over here is uh, bring this back. Uh, you can indeed push this off as well, if you want. And you will actually soft lock the level if you do. Your goal is just to push it up to this ledge such that you can jump over it and then immediately get hit by this guy, I think. Okay, never mind. We can fall, there's a little gladiator man in here. Milton Burley's the name. Pumpin's my game. Pumpin's my game. I could believe the UK. Yeah, true. It still has this level though. Oh. Oh, I still need the strength power up. Ugh. All right, try me, try me, try me, try me, try me. Nah, it's not worth it. Oh, is it not just the voice? Oh, sorry. Oh boy, oh boy. I will definitely say there's a, um, in this hub as well, the fairy tale, yeah, true, the voice is so, granted though, being voiced by the sorting hat is pretty legendary. Not gonna lie. Um, but, uh, yeah, so the other levels in this hub, if I had to gauge them based on length, the, um, the... I mean, there's lots of nooks and crannies, so hopefully I don't die, but... Uh, but the, um, yeah, the fairy tale level is actually quite short. I'd probably say that's on the... Oh my god. Oh. Oh. and suffering. <sighs> Gracefully sliding straight past the platforms. This is what I mean. It's like, why is this like, why are the checkpoints so far away? Did you see how like generous they were in the, in the Western level? They were so generous in the Western level. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, the other levels, also, uh, the, these golden apples are still gone. <laughs> just to, just to add insult to injury. The statues! Okay, well, that's just, that's just me. Uh, the statues! Gone, uh, you gotta re redestroy. But the apples! Gone forever. Gotta reload the whole stage for that. You know, I'm half tempted to just, like, Snack this, because we've done the statues. Like, I, I might as well take a second crack at that. My big strong Gexy has done it again. 
love those bulging biceps. These biceps are just the beginning, my fair maiden. Oh. Speaking of bulging. Oh. Did I just say that out loud? Yep, I'm afraid you did. I'm a bad boy. This was not in the script. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I <laughs> might as well claim the remote and then give it another crack. It's he is a bad boy. Uh, okay. Uh, fortunately, yeah, the last remote is literally a get to the end of the stage remote, so it's not that bad. But yeah, these apples, ugh. 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 So, yeah, so the trick with the apples, and it's kind of annoying because you're bouncing as you pick them up. But you have to basically watch the number show up. That's how you can guarantee that the apples actually work. Because what would happen is that you saw uh, the second apple only said one. What would happen is you'd get the third one, it would say two, and then uh, not trigger the remote at the end of the level that you wanted the whole level to find. It's very disappointing if you if you do miss that. So, and and it's mostly because of any of the apples just won't trigger. And you're like, ugh. Ugh. Give me an ugh. <laughs> Hopefully re-navigating this level isn't too bad, but I think you still gotta dance around that one, um, building. Because it's still got flies around it. Epic coding. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what's up with that one. I don't know if it contributes to the, uh, distaste of the, um, I want to see if I can get that without having to wander back. Um, if it uh, contributes to the growing distaste of this level. Being able to do that jump is cool though. And, and to, truth be told, like, I, I'm complaining about the western level's aesthetics, but then I'm like, I like this one. The Gex costume, the, uh, the cloudy, just aesthetic of everything. It's great fun. It's just, yeah, I, w I wish the level wasn't so, like, obnoxious to sort of navigate. That's all it is. Um, so the way the, the N64 level works from memory is it's all in a cave, so there's less falling off. And there's also, uh, instead of these strong power-ups, I think you get a, like, um, a winged cap. So you get to glide around in the level. I think that's what happens. It still might have this mechanic actually somewhere in it, but it's a lot more like isolated. It doesn't have like things that you're pushing off ledges. Yeah, I think you definitely have to do this because the uh, the enemy on the inside doesn't fly. They smell heroes, my friend. <laughs> they let you in the army. They let you in the army? Toga, 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 so we're red on the statues, don't have to think about that, at least. There we go. Oh, he's, say he's saying the toga line again. I'm intentionally avoiding that checkpoint as well. Just so I can grab it halfway in the level. Ah, oh, we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, did I have one other story? Once I get a little bit of downtime, I'll have a look at it. Alright, we're gonna get we're gonna get that uh that apple. It's gonna say one, dang it. Whoops. <laughs> uh, uh, that, 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 no no that was calculated. That was calculated, don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Seriously, uh, this could be ever so closer. It's like the freaking Toy Story 2 freaking leaves. 
Do you like how suddenly you're not bouncing? Oh look, a one! Wow. Who could have believed it? Uh, yeah, what was the uh, other thing I had in my news? I had one other thing. Scrolling through, scrolling through. Oh, uh, yeah, um, oh, one, one funny thing with, uh, Marvel Rivals was, uh, they had a bit that, uh, asked, well, they, it's a Chinese game and lots of Chinese games have surveys, so it's like, they just directly want a lot of customer feedback. I'm actually all for that, uh, because they don't ask for, like, an email address or anything, this is, like, a legitimate form about how to improve the service, I sort of think that incentivizing with an in-game reward is, like, Mm, but then also, eh, you know, like it's a direct survey. It's like a Steam hardware survey, you know, it's like, eh, might as well. Uh, but part of it said, what other kinds of games do you play? Like specific FPS games, and it listed many examples. Uh, the top, the first one in my list, I don't know if this is random for everyone or whether my list was just hilariously lucky like this, uh, was um, X Defiant. Oh boy, I cannot wait to play X Defiant. Yeah, I, I think this one's probably on the, the more well-made. It runs like trash, though. It It's it's real, like, weak-running Marvel Rivals. Um, like, it's... Yeah, I'm, I'm getting not... I mean, I'm not saying I need 144 FPS on a, uh, on a 4K display. Like, I could do with, you know, less than that. And I can obviously turn down some settings, but yeah, when, when the... The visual fidelity just tanks because the ambient occlusion implementation isn't there on, uh, you know, when you're not using Lumen. It's like, ugh. Uh, yeah! X Defiant! The wonderful game that I can definitely still play. Uh, so yeah, X Defiant, for reference, X Defiant is shutting down. Uh, the creative director, was it? No, or the producer of the game tweeted six weeks ago saying, uh, I, I want to put to rest the rumors that X Defiant will be shutting down after season four. Uh, that is not true at all. I, I'm paraphrasing here. I don't have the tweet open. Um, yeah, if you have an account already, you can still play it. So there is that. Uh, it came out in on May 21st, 2024. Six and a half months ago. Uh, yeah, the, the producer said, uh, I'm, I'm putting to rest the rumors, uh, the game is not shutting down after Season 4. He said that, six weeks ago. The game is now shutting down, after Season 3. He was technically correct. Yes. <laughs> oh, at least I got that jump easier this time. Two! Ah! 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 You guys playing cards? Oh my gosh, was this checkpoint here the whole time and I just missed it? Uh, <laughs> the best kind of card. There was a checkpoint there the whole time and I just never got that one. I oh know, I'm sorry. Listen, no one called me out on that one at least. Bob's been keeping up with the idle animations, but none of us saw that checkpoint. Okay? It's not the end of the world anyways, because I lost most of it, because I... No, actually, yeah, no, I know, I, I could have saved that ages ago. Padding! Padding! Ah, uh, it's, uh, it's still kind of annoying. Because <laughs> I fell, and falling doesn't matter on how much health you're on. I can definitely tell you that uh, I, I, I was like, I know the grease level is going to be on... A, the three level stream <laughs> and so I was like well I might as well because this lo this level takes an hour we're still we're still getting the the flyers we've been in here for half an hour oh boy I'm cutting this one tight on time oh, especially that right yeah, nah. let's just back up let's just try to do that again uh but yeah, no, X Defiant is shutting down. Uh, it is shutting down now for people who haven't played the game. And for people who have played it, 
until June 3rd, 2025, which is uh, hilariously longer than what the game has currently been live for. Um, pick up the health on the way? I will, yes. Um, it is kind of odd though, because it's like without new players, it is going to die off, and I don't quite get why it can't just have new players. Uh, yeah, no, it lifts about like 20 Concords. Like six six months is, is a non-trivial amount of time. Like that's that's all right uh, in terms of a thing. Um, but uh, yeah, for people who don't know, or for people who are not in the year 2024 and will probably never remember this game, just like how no one remembers uh, freaking uh, what's the, what was the previous like? Uh, oh yeah, I see what you mean about the health. Uh, what was the previous one that got shut down like so quickly? Started with A. It was the one that like reminded me of Babylon's Fall. That's what it was. Uh, for an MMO, that is nothing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, they are giving refunds to players who bought the very, very fancy special edition of the game because they never did anything about that. Toga, toga, toga. Move before I step on you. Oh, the health's right there. I'll get it. I'll get it. <laughs> yeah, this is such a weird ledge here, isn't it? Oh. No, 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 I got this. I got this. I got this. Don't worry. Bob, you're jinxing it. No. Oh, well. I smell heroes, my friend. <laughs> when I was practicing this, I actually didn't even find it was like that bad. Once again, some vertex. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. At the very least, uh, not at the very least, because I gotta push these platforms again, which is always annoying. Uh, but at the very least, uh, I mean, if you think about it in terms of apples. I didn't really lose that many flies, and the apples are gotten, so that's the important part, at least. Yeah, I wish this one lasted a little longer, though, I tell ya. Spending all my time in the darn grease level. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, yeah, for people who don't know what X Defiant is, uh, it was Ubisoft's Call of Duty. Uh, it had crossovers from lots of other Ubisoft franchises, including being multiple characters from other Tom Clancy games, and, uh... Were there any other franchises? I don't know anything about this game. I had a mate who played it, and he thought it was alright. And, uh, that was it. It then disappeared from my headcanon until today. Or when the day I read that announcement was, which was a couple of days ago. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's that. But I think it's a, it's a poster child of like, why, why? And also Ubisoft has spent a ton of money on this. Like, this is their baby. This is their thing. This is what they wanted to compete against Call of Duty with. And did it work? And I think the answer is an overwhelming no. It didn't work at all. Uh, X Defiant probably costs millions, tens of millions of dollars. They are shutting the servers off so quickly. They are refunding the people who bought the fancy edition, but they're not refunding the other people who bought microtransactions. Going to critical, the issue is that they released it too late. Too close to Blop 6. Uh, by too close to Blop 6, you mean like, they released it in May. The, the problem was, you can't release a game that competes with Blop 6 because People pay, pay uh, people will buy Call of Duty every year. And lots of these game companies have forgotten that still. Uh, it wasn't different. Uh, yeah, I don't think it being, yeah. It does have a Rabbids level, but it's a very underwhelming Rabbids level. Uh, I think he meant the full release. Oh, well, not, yeah, the, full, the full release was May. Yeah, it had been in a uh, beta for like two years. I think it was 2022. 
I need to get to the aqueduct and drain the lizard if you get my group. So I, I, I definitely, I actually, I lie. I knew, I knew of it for a bit longer than <laughs> just this year. But uh, uh, the point still stands of like, also, but, side note, what is early access these days? Because it's just, because it's just like, you just release a game early. You got the Indiana Jones game, it had an early access like three days ago. And I thought, oh, isn't that just like pre-ordering the game slightly early? And the answer is yes, but the ray tracing wasn't in the game until today, when it actually came out. So like, what it was, what, why, what is, what is happening here? Uh, but I, I, I digress on that one. Finally, we shall grab this bonus coin and continue on with the level. Or I die here. So I had breakfast. There we go. So that opens up. You know what this means as well. <laughs> literal... Literal croc platforming. That is, that is a croc platforming section right there. Certified croc moment. To make you feel even more awkward about the jumps. Look at this! Look at this! All right, we're just gonna we're just gonna go for it. Oh, oh, oh! oh. Yeah, sure, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's not over yet, as well. We're still gonna jump over this. Like, I I get where they're coming from, but. Oh boy, man. Oh boy. <laughs> they put all the eggs in. <laughs> yeah. Dude, this is this is actual tense platforming, I'll tell ya. And and none of the other levels are like this. None of them. I I have small reservations about the anime level because it does require fighting a lot of enemies before they get to you. Checkpoint here, by the way. Finally. Uh, this is, that was the final checkpoint of the level, and the level is not too much longer, fortunately. Provided I haven't missed any flies, but uh, it should be fine. And actually, it's actually not that bad if you're missing flies, because the checkpoints will respawn. The anime level is annoying because there are no checkpoints. That's, that's the reason why I don't like that one as much. Uh, yeah, like, yeah, we're, I know, we made Ubisoft the punching bag last week. I don't need them to be the punching bag again. But, like, they are. They're making such terrible business decisions. Like, I could have... I mean, there, there are players for this game. But the price to make them... It's just like... Oh, true, yeah. We can... Let's make fun of them again. Just for... Just for... Fetty. Just like the... Yeah. No checkpoints. Yeah. So, anyway. So, that remote is always chilling out. So, worst case, if the last uh, the last apple doesn't activate, I'll just grab that. But the last apple should activate, hopefully. Um, but yeah, like everything Ubisoft is doing is like I can obviously point out and say that's not going to make you that much money. You know, it will make you that much money. Uh, literally releasing a Rayman game for a tenth of that budget. People will buy it. You don't. You, you don't need to do anything fancy. Just make a game and have like creative platformers and stuff like that. And, like I'm not saying, oh, like platformers or you know, because uh, first-person shooters do sell. I, I don't deny that. But like, it's an oversaturated market. You cannot get an insane amount of revenue unless you're insane. By the way, I hate these platforms. The sequence is just like. You see what I mean? It's like, it sort of pulses between, like, two layouts. It's very odd. Uh, also, save your frost... ...again. Oh, actually, hold on, wait, don't save your frost, because I've... <laughs> ...I'm going about this the wrong direction. Although I am getting, uh, these flies, at least. But, uh, I think... Are the flies up here, or...? 
Because the, the remote is up there. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. It's all Greek to me. Alright, let's use this. And let's grab this fella. One last time. Oh my gosh. Oh, he's so far away from the wall. Uh, I hope I did. I'm pretty certain I did. This one's not as rough a jump, though. It throws me off that, like, the last three platforms don't bounce. There you go, there's your three. I see a pot there. Uh, there are five missing flies, so... I see a pot there. Uh, do you like having a ledge that you don't quite know where down is? As well? I think it's down... yeah, okay, it's down here. Ooh. So, I mean, we'll grab that, but then I will actually try and get the flies before I grab that remote. And there's no, uh, there's no flies chilling in these underneath parts. Let's, I think you're probably right, I only got one of the pigs. I don't think I got both. Okay, well, that one I got. Yeah, okay. Pop for three, um... Yeah, I'm not quite sure where the remaining flies are. Like, I, I don't think the pot has all of them. Ooh, ooh. Nah, okay. I don't know what I bounced off of, but sure. Oh. Ah, the pot by tool. Who are you for? I don't know the lyrics, but I do know he called me a hypocrite for quite a bunch of that song, though. I must have been high. It's absolutely criminal they didn't put more than three true songs in any Guitar Hero. Also, absolutely criminal, they didn't put close to the edge. Although, to be fair, any song that's longer than like six minutes, you feel it in Guitar Hero. <laughs> Can we do a Guitar Hero game that's exclusively like songs that came out after 2010? Oh yeah, yeah. The, I don't know. I re oh, I really want to interview like anyone who works at Neversoft. Maybe Andy Thipps knows. Who who greenlit that one? Yeah, there's three flies in there. So somewhere has one fly. Somewhere. Welcome to the Sultan of Brunei's bathroom. And it's not this pig. It's not this pig. Let's just let's just make sure it's not that pig. It's not hiding behind there. It's not chilling up this tree. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, and we checked behind here. It's not hiding behind here. So it is. Oh, it is a great song. Um. Oh yeah. Oh boy. Like you. you feel that time. Like, Freebird, Freebird is like, you, it's unrelenting. You, you feel like you played like a regular song and then like, okay, ultimate challenge time, go. Um, I don't think there's particularly any other songs that like have that level of like, absolutely you gotta like nail it right at the end kind of ability and it's long. I just want to highlight that. And it's long because I was gonna say like, Jordan's probably a classic. Uh, potentially at the beginning. My saving grace is that there is two spots with checkpoints that, like, haven't, you know, I haven't re-triggered, so I should be able to just go back for those safely. 
and I shouldn't lose any flies, because it'd be kind of annoying I have to get, like, these flies again, but... Knowing me, knowing my luck... And you're still gonna, like, hold on, yeah, because you can, you can go down this way. I don't recall there being any, like, particular flies chilling around here, though. Like, if you spot it, spot it in it, then, uh, feel free to, oh, feel free to call it out, but I don't, I don't particularly see it, so. I always feel so, oh my gosh, I always feel so, so antsy going between the clouds and everything, because it, it ripples in very odd ways. Uh, this checkpoint would have respawned, so. <laughs> there you go, there you go. No risk. Literally no risk. Alright, let's check the very beginning of the level. Man, if only I had a fly radar, you know? Uh, unfortunately, all these pots are gonna look like they've respawned. What do you mean? I told you about this checkpoint. Yeah, the checkpoint. Yeah. yeah, so if I just didn't get this pig, like, right at the beginning... I'm pretty sure... Yeah, I'm pretty sure I got that one again. Uh, I don't see... Another one. I like these... Green Gexes. Yeah, yeah, it can't be a pot. Well, it can't it can be a pot if I didn't pick up all the flies from that pot. Usually, though, it's very odd to have that happen. You ever do that in Spyro? You actually, like, break open a chest and it has more than one gem and you proceed to only Welcome pick up, like, some the of them? Of and it has to reload the, the pot, like, on a reload of the level because technically it's not entirely, like, cleared off. Hedge Gex. Uh, I probably would have gotten that one, and I'm not going to double check, but I, I'm pretty certain I got that one again. I think this is just like a very lingering fly. I can't think of like anywhere in particular I would have missed just the fly chilling there. Uh, I didn't really check the roof again. There's a big snake in the plane shot! Let's suppose this guy had it again. Nope. The Playboy Mansion, yes! Very excited about visiting the Playboy Mansion, though, every time, though. Also, I think I gotta break these, uh... These columns again. Is it, or is it, it does sound like him a little bit, yeah. Is he still around? Is he still alive? The guy who does this voice? I'd love him to just, like... Narrate my wedding. You know, <laughs> like... Professional. I bet you it's one of these pigs. Not one of the pigs. Dan Danny Gould is still around. Very nice. We gotta, we gotta find him. We gotta find him. Tell him this Australian with a sore throat is playing Gex, and he must opine right now. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I wonder if like he loves the Gex role. Like he would go back and do it. Unfortunately, the, uh, the British voice actor isn't with us anymore. What a shame. He was also around in The Simpsons. Ah! That explains everything. That explains... That is Gex lore in a nutshell. Uh, was he responsible for Maud Flanders dying? Just out of context, was he responsible? 
I need to get to the aqueduct and drain the lizard, if you get my drift. I'm now a little bit concerned about how many other places there could have been a fly. Because that's... Between two... Oh, okay, so after Gex. They, they saw him do Gex and said... It'll be good. Was he on the movie? Was he on the movie? There was a terrifying amount of, like, drop I was doing there. The one fly. The one fly. It's it's the worst feeling. I smell heroes, my friend. No way is this level long enough such that there was one fly left. This has now got me worried though, because I wanted back here. And we didn't spot it, and I hit this guy again just in case. And that wasn't him. Where is this fly? I mean, Gould reprises Rollis Gex. Ah! He's so back. He's so back. I wonder if he's seen the Saturday morning Gex cartoon. Probably as. Dude, I'm now sweating. I'm actually sweating right now. I'm like, no way. No way are we one one fly short, and I cannot for the life of me locate it. I mean, there's never been a place with more than two pigs. And I keep falling down this one ledge every time. And it's not this one. I keep testing it's this one, but it's not that one. I don't recall seeing any flies like fall off ledges or anything, so that doesn't feel right. I feel like my reflexes just died. It's just like, uh. That wasn't like a me preventing, like, failing to walk over a ledge, but it's because you don't see the, the button to crouch when I tap it until I do the jump afterwards. Like, yeah. I'm blaming the controller again. Okay, hold on. I've gotten everything else at least. Brain shut off, yeah. Just walk off a ledge. How would you look at that? I'm going to check the end of the level again. I'm going to be kicking myself if it was there the whole time. Definitely wasn't up here. I don't recall there being anything else extra up here. And I don't recall, like, there being a weird... I love the diving board little ledge. It's a very Tomb Raider level. These guys should get the Tomb Raider license. That'd be funny. Uh, it's it's somewhere in the level, but man, I am kicking myself at like how like I feel like I've narrowed it down. Like I haven't relooked in the trees or anything, but like that'd be absurd if they're in the trees because I went up all the trees. We looked around here in this one really awkward ledge. Skip that small platform. Uh, this one. I. That's how I got up here. This is from Mr. Sinatra. I've done it. I've made the Greek level infamous. Yeah, I don't recall it being up there. 
They're having a fun time, I'll tell you that. The pillar part, this. And you got the smaller... Like, you got the bit on the left that's jutting out, but that doesn't mean anything. And you got the one on the right, which you have to land on, and that doesn't mean anything either. Unless you mean... <coughs> this part. Uh... I don't think I explicitly jumped on the... the other one. Here. Oh, uh, like really before, like back all the way here. <coughs> yeah, this is where the cough's coming in, oh boy. I, if that's the snakes, yeah. The part down there, uh, I'm just looking on the ledges for the moment, but I don't see anything jump out at me on the ledges. Unless it's like a lowered platform that I just completely missed. Pretty sure this is a drop though. Yeah, that's a drop. Uh, there's, a, there's health there, if you saw that. I don't see any other... Fly. Is, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, it doesn't... I need to get to the aqueduct and yeah. the if you get my drift. There's a lot of enemies that don't drop things as well. Like here, it's like, oh, no, not an enemy. I smell heroes, my friend. I mean, it'd be a little cheeky as well to like re-put it around here, but I don't, yeah, I didn't remember that. Oh my gosh, those snakes are back. Uh, we've been in this level for an hour. do be like that. This is, this is, uh, I mean, this is what I was warning about. I was like, the Greek level is the pain. I don't recall having this much trouble with the, the, yeah. And I really don't feel like skipping it and trying again. I really don't feel like doing it again. So I'm going to make it my life's goal to get this done. Uh, the one ledge I don't think I re-stood on was over there. Guide time? Ah, uh, maybe? Maybe? Maybe, okay, here we go. Uh, what are we looking for? Jack 300 flies, uh, grease level. 100 flies, uh, not totally Scrooge. What's the name of the level? What is the name of the level? Mythology Network. Dude, you know it's good because these guys are definitely filming it on, uh... There you go. 100% speedrun? Yeah, sure. Speedrun guide. There you go. Uh, you know it's good because they're all filming off, like, VHS. It's got that kind of, like, analog nature to it. Alright, this video is 10 minutes long as well. So... Uh, and it is a 100% speedrun guide, so he's got all the, all the flies. What I'm gonna do is, I remember, uh, crossing, so the, the, that gap over there, I remember getting that with 59 flies. So I'm gonna look at his part of the speedrun and go, how many flies does he have then? Because there's no reason to return I need to get to the if you got all your, if you get my group. all the, the flies you need. Uh, okay, terrifyingly, he has 54. Oh wait, no, no, now he's picking up the, the pot down below. Now he's at 58. 59. Okay. It, yeah, uh, d no, because I, because I remember dying there and picking up 59 flies again. Also, he doesn't even, like, push it with the strength, he just goes. So, okay, it's definitely after this.
unfortunately, I don't have too much of memory after this of like all the individual places I had. I had uh like all the flies, but hopefully, hopefully it narrows it down to some things. But I don't think he's going anywhere too exotic. Like he's just going into the the regular old you know areas you you go to in the level, like. None of this looks really that weird. Alright, so he's up on this ledge. He's at 81 at this very moment. I don't remember how many I had. I grabbed all the paws and the bonus coins as well. So, Alright. Uh, so 81 is up here. 82 was killing the guy on the, the next... Like, on this pedestal over here. And he's, he's going fast, man. He's zooming. Uh, that was the only poor as well here. Just the enemy on the on the edge. Uh, let's see. He's he's running around. He's trying to do this jump right. He keeps missing them as well. Very unlucky speed run. He's at 88 by the time he hits the checkpoint, and he's so chilling up here still with 88. He then is on one health. He drops down a ledge to grab the four print, the bonus coin, he comes back. I don't know what's up with this guy's ordering. Picks up the four print. He's walking into the remote. Oh! Oh! I see what he's done. Cheeky strat. Okay. Uh. I'm not doing this. What he does is that he walks into the um, the remote spot, but like only into it, so it doesn't like stand on the ledge and trigger it. And then he dies, and it pushes him onto it, collecting the the remote, but not actually leaving the Show level the because he dies. Then. That's what he's done to speedrun this level. Interesting. Okay, uh, he goes up, gets the apple, it spawns. He then goes over to the thing. There is a Welcome fly in the, in the tree at the end. And then he breaks two pots and he's got enough. Dude, I'm gonna go nuts if that was there at the end the whole time. And we're just wandering around the whole level. It's like, no, 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 the fly was there at the end the whole time. You just didn't see it. I don't even have to fly if it was. It was literally at the top of this. Which I'm very certain I've gotten, because it looked right there. He hit one pot here, and then the, I assume there's the pot at the top of the, the thing. Also, he uh, hit this. Yeah, that pig. Yeah. That's 93. You said you wanted to go check me. Well, I'm here now. I'm here. So he's at 93 here, so I definitely know of these ones. Heavens the lover boy, an 80s flashback. When was the last like fly you got? 92 was the was the pot and the hmm hmm. I'm going nuts. I'm going nuts. No, really? Hold on. He hits this pig. There's a pot here. And he also hits this pig. And that's that's how he's at 88. So before this, it's a pig, two pigs here, pig there, uh, three pots, and the top of the tree. That should have him at 87, rather. Before he gets to this ledge here. And I feel like I've gotten all these ones. Because, I mean, just, just another reminder, two, two pigs. Oh my gosh, what is going on? Ten hours straight. Oh boy. I, there is a point, I will call it. I will go nuts if I, if I go too long. I will definitely do just like a follow-up, like, 
yeah, nah, that, this is me going nuts kind of video. Because, I mean, I... The... The golden apples and them not triggering. Uh, for example, I... When I was practicing this, or just like rerunning it for the Retro Achievement set, um, that didn't go off for me, and I was like, I was so done by the end of the day. And I just like re-ran this whole like level again, just to make that work. Yeah, he's not getting any exotic poor places. They all look like they're in exactly the places I've been to. Unless it's just a pig I completely missed between... <laughs> between here and there. I'm going nuts though. The pain... Ah, oh, yeah. Because, yeah, the worst, the worst part is that you, yeah, if you don't get the flies, you basically have to do the whole level. Because you've got to get right up to the end. Like, yeah, you don't have to do the apples. Just the apples. I need to get to the aqueduct and Un Unreal padding, yeah, true. Hmm. The worst part as well is that, like... Welcome to the Sultan of Brunei's bathroom. Oh, gosh. I keep saying the worst part. That's just how I start sentences without sounding awkward all the time. My tail doesn't like you. I have the right number of... of, uh... flies before this part. Wow, where? Yeah. It's like an enemy didn't appear or something. Like, I don't know how to, like, follow the number going forward, but it's like, like, ah, how would I put it? Like, there's meant to be an enemy, it never spawned, and then I'm constantly now wondering where's that extra bit of, oh, every time I drop down here. I can't, yeah, ah, yeah. Uh, to the, to me editing the VOD, uh, where is... Where did I go wrong? Where did I go oh so wrong? Where'd I go so wrong? I... The one, the one fly that fell between the crack. Wait, the one fly that fell between- No. No, I definitely got that one again, right? I smell heroes, my friend. This can't- I- I- I did get that one that almost got stuck. I'm not sure if it got stuck on this, like, run? I think I got stuck, like, on the first go. But I never re-cleared this roof. But I did clear the enemy again. I don't recall if there was a fly on the roof. That is the one place I actually never re-checked. Hi, right, okay. They're gonna wrap this on. How to save a life! That's the one. A classic. I, you might as well check. I need to get to the aqueduct and drain the lizard. He, he, he has been needing to get to the aqueduct and draining the lizard for quite some time now. Though. The music's great though. Uh, can you tell why they uh, redesigned the level? Uh, yeah, I don't recall 
uh, anything being on the roof here. That is one powerful piece of machinery. Other, other than a bit of life, I guess. Need am I dead? Which I could do with. Yeah, nah. Ah. Ah. I thought I was going nuts because I did, like, actively avoid going up here again. But no, like... It's not that hidden, is it? Oh, that, that one pot again. I might as well try and break that one pot again. Oh. <laughs> Bit of a bit of a gutsy kick there. Nope. Nope. Come on. Come on. That was worth a double check. Not sure if you could do a cheeky jump. Nah. I don't know. I'm I'm we're almost three hours. Yeah, I... Yeah, I might call it and just like... Yeah, the, the, the headache... Is I've effectively got to do this whole level again. To get the hundred flies. Yeah, the pain, unprecedented. Yeah, I... At least, yeah, true, the apples didn't glitch out, but, like, yeah, the apples are the, like... You can do both the apples Welcome and the flies the in one go, because you basically yeah. got to get to the end of the level for both. Imagine getting to, like, 99 coins in Mario 64 and you, you just unloaded, like, you know, the last ones. What better way to start the next trick? Yeah, well, the, the problem is I still got to get through four other levels. <laughs> That's, that's my problem, like, the next stream is still going to be long. I did give myself four weeks, I guess, but still. I'm going nuts, man. I, I swear. I swear. I... We've checked every nook and cranny. And the worst part, like, I've, I've done this before, and I'm going to play through this again and it'll be like, yep, zero problems. I cannot reverse time and tell you where that missing fly is at all. They're just mispicking up coins from some enemies. Yeah, that, yeah, exactly, yeah. You get, you get some levels like, um, uh, you know, uh, what's the one? Not Jolly Roger, the other one. Die Die Docs, that's the one. Oh my gosh, <laughs> name blanking. Um, and uh, Die Die Docs only having like 109 coins total. Granted though, Die Die Docs doesn't have that many enemies that die. But it does have a blue coin switch. So if you potch up getting any of those blue coins, good luck. Can you make the remote now before? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, oh, maybe not before the 3 hour mark. It's like a, uh, it's such a trek to get there. Because <laughs> it's not like you unlock shortcuts or anything to really like sneak through the level. The shortcuts are you don't have to get the strength power up every time. Does the tortoise have a fly? No, the tortoise never has a fly, now. I never did drop down here. I guess. I don't believe the flying things have flies. I get this just in case. Nah, nah. I I don't know. I'm I'm starting to think it never loaded. It unloaded in some way because I'm hitting every single one of these pigs. I mean, I need to get to the. Uh, it, I mean, it's another it's another sort of similar looking grease level, but it's all in a cave. And it's like, it's a completely different 
level, if that makes sense. The arrangement of everything is just entirely different. Uh, is this better or worse than the time you got to equip that thing in Realms of the Haunting? Um... Better. No, worse. Because this one was not going to have an outcome, whereas at least that one is like... I was just an idiot. <laughs> oh, I need, I need the, the frost power up again. <laughs> oh my gosh. A two hour video on Goombas in Super Mario 64. There's an unkillable uh, Goomba because it gets despawned if you get close. Interesting. So maybe this flight. Maybe. Given that there's exactly 100 flies, though, it feels very odd for, like, a fly to despawn like that, though. Um, and you can see as well when you try to, like, when you hit enemies and stuff, it'll bounce off the, you know, the edges of the level. It'll try to come back towards you. Uh, and it gets despawned. Yeah, uh, there's There's bound to be an explanation. And after playing it again, I will be able to 100% tell you exactly what that is. Hold on, you wanna know what's the best part? I'm very certain I have my actual test recording as well, so I can use this reference just before I grab this, just in case I'm actually going insane. But yeah, 100%, like that's, that's the top of the level. So, hold on. I'm, go I'm legit finding this out. Da 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 da. Blendo pulls the memory banks. Good fallback would be to have to fly despawn and respawn with the. Well, yeah, that should be that should be how it is. Uh, okay. Uh, to the thing. To the thing. I forgot when exactly I played this. Oh, sounds. That's how. That's how you know. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> This is this is blunt. Yeah, I I'm actually finding my old footage just to, just to figure this out. I have evidence proof. I did this. I swear. Uh, obtain the hundred coin flies in unsolved mysteries, October twenty. Okay, check out my October twenty uh, video. I was playing GDA Vice City for a fair bit of this one. Hold on. The one before. Seven hours. Gex. Here we go. Pirate level. Sitting on that pirate level for a long time. Okay. Literally, I'm on the level. I'm on the level. What did I, uh, did I get there at the end? Okay. 100 at the end. 100. Okay. Scrolling through. Scrolling through. How do I... Hold on, even better, even better. Just da, 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 add window capture. Da, 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 da. Add that to MPV. Hi, where's the where's the window capture? No, it says it right there. MPV. My mouse is there. Ah, <laughs> uh, I tried to show you exactly what I'm looking at as well. You know what I realized as well? I'm doing a lot of backtracking in this level for the same thing. Like, hold on. Oh, yeah, 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 hold on. So I got, I got to the, the chest, the, the pot right here, and I was at 98. I was at 98. And then I, and yeah, that was, that was odd. Okay, 98, hold on. Let me scroll back. So the point that I knew I had, so jumping over the ledge, was... This is a, a tremendously visual stream. Just want to add that. Uh, when I did the karate kick, I was at 57. 
Okay, that basically confirms that everything has to be in front of me, because if I was missing two at the end, then that seemed all right. But yeah, what what my theory is is that there's an enemy, like one of those little like kind of gladiator hat dudes uh, at the part with the pillar with the snakes, because then there's two pots. There's the jump to get to the the power up. Then I'm at 69, but I'm always I'm two down here, so really I should be at 71. Uh, I scroll across, I botch up this jump just as many times as you've seen on stream. If we do find the fly, yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh, Itch.io seems to be up. Thank you, Itch.io. Itch.io being back. Yes. Uh, 70 fly, 73. I'm going insane. I want to, like, find out here. 79. And then... 84, 88, 89, I died, uh, 90, I get to the end, 98, and then where were the ones that when I went back, oh, there's the achievement. Nah, I'm going nuts, okay. Stuff it. I will end the stream on a very disappointing note. I tried. I tried. I really tried. I think, legit, I think something didn't spawn, and I'll probably compare the footage and I'll go, that thing didn't spawn, and I cannot explain why. But, I mean, it's not an awfully long level. Like, uh, I mean, give yourself like 20 minutes, you'll get it back. Sif yeah, exactly. I, I can't do it on stream. That was a very boring end to the stream for everyone, I'm sorry. Ah, this is the biggest fear of why I was like, oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I don't have to do the apples at least. The glitchy apples. Just being out of things, exactly. You know what, I'm gonna make it up to you. I'm gonna do the bonus level right now just to, just to tag it off with at least there's something. At least there's something here. Lock and load, little lizard. Oh, we did the idle animation already. Oh, uh, this is this is the kangaroo one again. So at this point in the game, they start recycling the bonus stages. Uh, for the most part, it feels like it's about the same as the previous one. It's just you only have a minute thirty instead of two minutes, so that's usually where the, it gets trickier. But it's not that tricky. It's not that tough at the end of the day. At least this one. Some of the other ones get a bit tougher. Yeah, I don't know. This one feels pretty normal on difficulty for me. I'm not sure if it's exactly the same layout as well. You like that spin in the air, by the way? It's fun. Kangu... Kangu... Kangexru, sorry. There you go. Uh, yeah. Ah, oh, always disappointing collectathons when you don't know how to collect the thon. Uh, if it makes you feel better, Gex 2 doesn't have any of that. It has remotes for collecting so many of the uh, little pieces, but the pieces respawn if you die and they don't reset from your counter, so you can just die and grind. <laughs> so, there you go. Circle, triangle, square, star, diamond, star. There we go. Well, what a awkwardly disappointing way to end that one, but I'll observe the footage, I'll be back at it, and we shall, we shall redeem, redeem the missing remote, and then get it properly, so. Until then, I would like to thank you so very, very much for sticking around so much. My throat is dying as well, so that's great. Uh, I can start the last stream with Grease, that is true. Well, if I can nail it all in one stream, which might be the case, because none of the other levels I think are that of juice for like finding everything so that should be all right so and you're here yes so thank you very much uh i mean you guys are already followed on twitch and subscribe on youtube it's all good uh i could you say stuff on i could say stuff on the 30 as well mwnr.com uh i could have almost ended the stream at 1337 local time but it's 2338 very very late at night so now it's all good uh 
If you're a Marvel Rivals player, I don't know how long I'll be playing, but if you randomly do come across me, hi. Uh, I, if you're an X Defiant player, I'm sorry. Uh, if you're an Overwatch player, I'm also sorry. Uh, good old Leet Speak. I mean, Leet Speak was like a thing when Gex was a thing, right? Yeah. I right, see you fellas. Peace. I hate this grease level. Woo.